Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Waterdeep Dragon Heist, hosted by Variant Roles. My name is Eugenio Vargas. I use he, him pronouns, and I am also known as your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands from the actual play podcast, The Last Refuge. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for episode... Four? Four. Is this four? Four. Mm -hmm. Four uh, of the Winter Cruise uh, romp through Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Let's go around and introduce the rest of the Winter Crew. Let's start with Jonathan today. How are you, sir? Hey, doing pretty well. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'm at Red Hand Roleplay on Twitter, and I'm playing Rocky, the Goliath Monk Bruiser. Fantastic. And let's jump over to Allison. How are you this evening, Allison? Um, good. Um, I, you can find me on Twitter at Atletica05, and I play Anivel Rothkama, the half-orc barbarian blacksmith. That's right. About whom we almost learned some mysteries last week. Yes, a little, little mysteries. So, and maybe <laughs> did some things in Discord over the, over the week. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> uh, Alex, how about you? How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing a little bit better. Getting oh, over the plane plague. <laughs> Um, I wanted to look as cool as our, our Rocky. <laughs> I can't. So I was like, I ran upstairs and changed. Um, but uh, I'm Alex. You can find me on Twitter at Guardsong until I can figure out a better Twitter handle that didn't come out 10 years ago. Um, I play uh, I, I play the tiefling rogue uh, Somme. She, her, as do myself. I am also she, her. Um yeah. All, all right, <laughs> Max. Uh, what's up? <laughs> Actually, I'm the Oompa Loompa, formerly known as Max. Oh, uh, my mistake. My mistake. I, and apologies. I'm just having some fun tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm Max. Uh, he, him pronouns. I play the Aladrin Theron, who is the party's healer and kind of the, the new member of the party who everyone just doesn't seem to get along with yet. <laughs> Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> and last but most certainly not re not least, Stephen, how are you? I'm fantastic. Um, I play Rowan Toss Cobble Porridge Pot. There's a hyphen between Toss Cobble and Porridge Pot. <laughs> uh, he is a halfling bard, although he prefers the word hen, and both of our pronouns are he, him. I will never tire of the noting of the hyphen <laughs> between the names. It it's just... very important. I know it is. <laughs> and it just makes me smile. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our crew for tonight. Uh, most of you are probably aware you've joined us or one of our other teams throughout the last, oh gosh, it's now been just about a month since we started doing this. Uh, mm -hmm. So most of you may be aware, but for any of you who are new to this stream, uh, so that you know, we are part of a four-party mega stream Borg stream who are all playing through uh, Wizards of the Coast's newest published adventure, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. All four of the teams are somehow connected. We are very slowly on each episode learning a little bit more about maybe how that connection is happening and the uh, conspiracy theories abound. Send us yours if you come up with any. Uh, right, let's hop in. So last week, our crew of adventurers finished their investigation of what they believe to be a Xanathar's Guild hideout in the sewers below the city of Waterdeep. They were there to find uh, a friend of the semi-famous Volothamp Gedarm named Floon Blagmar, and they found him, but much to their horror, he was apparently being held captive by a magic-wielding half-orc and much more problematically, a mind flayer. And as if that wasn't enough, the mind flayer had a pet intellect devourer. So really some excellent encounter material for first level characters. Uh, combat broke out, obviously. And though our poor Goliath monk had his intelligence score temporarily reduced to zero, the party did somehow manage to defeat their foes. The mind flayer fled, the intellect devourer and the half orc were defeated. Floon was rescued and returned to Volo, and the party was given their reward for their quest. Not a hundred additional gold pieces per person as promised, but instead the deed to a rather large manor house on Troll Skull Alley in the north ward of Water. Deep. Though they were skeptical at first, once our friends saw their new property, they decided that they'd come out of the deal ahead. After spending a couple of days doing some basic cleanup, we have several questions left unanswered. What will the party use this inn slash tavern slash manor house slash whatever they're going to make it for? Is it really a good idea for this particular group to try and run any sort of business together? And how is that going to turn out? All good questions, but the answers will have to wait because as we ended last week's session, Silme got a sending from someone rather well known in Waterdeep. The message said, 
I am Vajra Safar, the Blackstaff. Come to Blackstaff Tower in the castle ward at once. Or first thing in the morning, because that's what we've decided to go on. Bring your friends. And so that's where we're going to start tonight. Uh, you all have gotten the sending. And I think as we discussed, we're going to uh, zip to the following morning when you all are gathering together again, stopping by Troll Skull Alley to pick... Uh, to pick up Theron, who spent the night in the manor house, and then head on over to Blackstaff Tower, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so uh, to uh, Trollskull Manor, you arrive, <laughs> and you head on inside. And Theron, why don't you tell us uh, about uh, what they find inside? Well, a very different sort of Theron comes down the stairs from the master bedroom. The Their hair is no longer orange and red and yellow streaks. It's now brown with pink lines all through it. Their walk is a little bit different, more of a sway to the hips. The robes hide the figure, but the face has become a little more soft, and their eyes are now no longer orange, but vibrant green. Who are you? <laughs> Thank you and more for importantly, starting us off. <laughs> who are you? Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, um, oh, right, you've never seen me like this before. Um, this is, uh, something that happens when, when good things happen. Wait, wait. Theron? Yes? No, that's not Theron. Theron looked a lot different. Yeah, ex exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm a ladrin. I'm, I'm a different form of elf. Uh, we, we change depending on our moods. I'm just, I'm happy to have a place to live finally and... And I think we're finally starting to bond as friends. And I just, I, I woke up this morning like this and I realize I do not have the clothes to fit this figure. Uh, <laughs> so I'm very glad I wear robes, but still, we may have to have a little talk later and maybe go shopping. Oh, we're going to have a very long talk later. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. Well, well, I think that this is just fantastic. Uh, I, I I look forward to meeting the new you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Rowan. I'm I'm very excited. So, uh, what's what's are we do? What are we doing today? Are we going to fix up the place? Are we going to get the tavern going? Um, I was thinking about uh, the suggestion of setting up a fighting school, and I think that's an amazing idea. Well, so I think there's something that we might have to see to first. Hopefully. I um I got a little message in my head last night, and I figured. Um, it could wait until the morning. We all needed a good night's rest. Um, but we need to go to uh, Blackstaff. Do you hear these voices often? What? Uh, I mean, <laughs> let's not go there. Maybe. I, <laughs> they keep me company, darling. Oh. Um, she did say immediately, but uh, fashionably late is usually how I live my life. Uh huh. So um, as much as I'd love to start making this a new home. Um, I believe we have an errand to run first, Diri, if, um, if you think you're up for it. It's going to take a little getting used to, so what better than walk it off, right? <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm going to do what I can to cover uh, my wounds up more because I'm a little bit concerned going to this place. Yeah, why don't uh, the four of you that are not Rowan, why don't you give me perception checks real quick? Let's start with uh, John, uh, with uh, Rocky, what'd you get? Uh, it's a 19. Okay, Theron? Nine. <laughs> Excellent, Sill. Sorry, my iPad is trying to update and I'm telling it no. Okay, how about you, Ani, while, uh, while Syl deals with that? 14. Okay, great. And Syl? 19. You okay, said perception, great. correct? I did, yes. So uh, Rocky and Ani and Syl, I think, all probably noticed Theron is, is far too busy with uh, dealing with the new form. Uh, but you notice uh, Rowan sort of go for, for his wrists and just sort of pull some bandages down. Uh, and try and sort of spread them out a little bit on his wrists. You I'll okay, just, big brother? Yeah, I was just gonna, can I kneel down next to Rowan and, hey, are you okay? It was a really long night. 
Um, I'm going to be completely okay. I'm a little nervous going into this situation, uh, but I I'll just stay in the back. Okay. Do you want another piggy pack? No, no, I, I don't think that would be appropriate in this situation, but thank you uh, for, the, for, for the offer because I know you're being supportive. All right, well, stick close to me, okay? You have me worried. Okay. Peter Rocky can cover you. Thank gotcha. you. Sorry, right. that, was, that was just really weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So with a new Theron and a, a different Rowan and, mm -hmm. and three very protective friends and fellow adventurers, you all head out to... Uh, the Castle Ward and to Blackstaff Tower. I doubt any of you have ever been inside Blackstaff Tower, but you all absolutely know where it is. It's probably the most imposing structure in Waterdeep. Uh, it's about three stories tall. It is solid stone. There have never appeared to be any entrances or exits uh, that you can regularly see. And uh, Sort of all around it, there's an open courtyard that is fenced in by tall wrought iron fences that also don't seem to have gates or entryways at all. And you are all aware that this is the home and center of power of the Blackstaff, the uh, mage of Waterdeep who is both apart from the city government, but also in intrinsically a part of the city. They are and have been uh, for generations now the mage that is set to protect uh, both Waterdeep and the magic within it. Um, definitely not someone to, to mess about with, but it is quite an honor to have been summoned here. And so as you approach the fences surrounding Blackstaff Tower, a portion of one of the fences and they're all it's all very sort of intricate uh iron work that's been twisted into vines and various uh scroll and curly q figures and as you approach one portion of the fence part of the iron begins to unwind and sort of form a gateway that uh an archway rather that opens up uh and leads into the courtyard surrounding blackstaff tower What was the name of the person who summoned me again? Her name is Vajra Safar. Vajra Safar. I love these names. <laughs> That's great. Vajra. All right, darlings. Um, the person we're looking for is Vajra Safar. Has anyone heard of her? I will take intelligence water deep knowledge checks for that. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a hen, so I get to re-roll this. Yay, natural one. <laughs> Uh, let's go the other way this time. So, uh, Ani, how about you? 10. Okay. And Sil? 15. Rowan? 12. Rocky? 13. And Theron? 15. Okay, so you have all heard the name Vajra Safar for sure. Uh, Theron, you and Sil both know a little bit more. Um, you know that Vajra has been the black staff for... 20 or 30 years now. She's been the Black Stuff for a while. Um, definitely as long as you've been in town, Theron, since that hasn't been that long. And still, I don't remember exactly how old you are, but probably for the vast majority of your life, uh, Vajra has been the Black Staff. She doesn't come out of, uh, of Black Staff Tower all that much. Um, she has sort of a... Uh, a group of agents that sort of are her, not police forces, maybe too strong a word, but her sort of agents within the city called the Grey Hands uh, that sort of take care of most of her business outside of the tower. Uh, but at this point, that's sort of all you know, and most, you know, the, the local lore and legends about the Black Staff, that's about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so do we know where we're going? I know that we're in... Do I have to so like... you're in the you're in the well, if you pass through the gates you're sort of in the courtyard now which surrounds Blackstaff Tower so about 30 40 feet ahead of you is the tower itself but again it just sort of looks like a smooth three story stone tower with no discernible entrances or exits I can yell <laughs> sure all right I yell Baja you summoned us. Hey, we're here. Where do you want us to go? Any anything? I just I try to and I try to make a big scene so attention's focused on me. <laughs> really good. Oh, uh, so you sort of carry on for for a bit, uh, and it takes a while. <laughs> Nothing sort of happens for a while, and you just keep going because I assume that she would. 
uh, and eventually you see on uh, the on the stone of the tower directly in front of you all uh, a set of double doors, uh, an archway, and a set of double doors begins to appear. Oh, good job, Lava. Yeah, let's go that way. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. We'll see you soon. Like, I guess. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. That's that's enough. That's enough. I just don't want the focus to be I... Rowan. <laughs> like hide to still. Uh, it, it's all right. I appreciate it, but I'll, I'll just hide in the back. And also, that is just incredibly neat. Is everyone seeing this? Like, what what kind of magic is that even? Cool magic. I was going to ask you. Cool magic. Yeah. I, I, That's I, the newest I, school of studies. I have to concur. C- cool magic. <laughs> <laughs> Evocation, enchantment, illusion, mm-hmm. cool. Cool magic. You have it to wear right. sunglasses. Right. But it is winter and it's really cold, so if we could get in as soon as it possible. Is, it is quite chilly out, yes. Oh. Uh, notice. Uh, I, I will literally be hiding behind people. Okay. <laughs> Great. But in you all head, I assume, yes? Yes. All right, so just make past a the doors. Joke, but I'll let it go. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Just past the doors is a short hallway uh, and a little staircase heading up and into a large octagonal room uh, chamber. It looks sort of like an entrance foyer. Uh, and there are doors on uh, six of the eight sides of the room leading, well, they're all closed, so you're not sure where they're leading. Uh, but you all sort of make your way into the center of this chamber. I'll just stay out. For someone who summoned us, you sure are making it hard. <laughs> uh, and from behind all of you, uh, where the door that you all came in was, you hear a voice say, well, nothing worth anything in this life comes easy, does it? Ah! Turn around. Uh, As you spin around, you notice a couple of things. One is that the door that you came in through is no longer there. The other is that uh, standing before you is a beautiful dark-skinned human woman uh, wrapped in uh, muted toned robes, uh, standing there uh, completely at ease, though she carries no weapons or armor or anything on her though knowing what you do about her you're sure that she doesn't need any of that uh very confidently looking at you with a slight smile on her face oh well i was right the voice matches the body hello beautiful (laughs) she uh opens her mouth to respond to you sill and then she sort of pulls back and she looks a bit a bit confused and she sort of looks to each of you and sort of shakes her head and and, uh, makes a, for those of you who are casters, what is clearly a somatic component of a spell uh, and does a minor casting and looks to you again and sort of waves and dispels the magic that she cast and uh, she just sort of shakes her head and she says, I knew this day would uh, be interesting, but... uh, you all have started it off much more quickly than I would have imagined. Was well, there you... something on my face? Uh, she says, um, funny, you should say it. No, not on your face, but rather on the other who is with you. Which what? one? The... The... A- a- Annie? Is it? Yeah. The... What did you call us here for again? Uh, she says, yes, uh, the uh, the half orc is is quite correct. Uh, we should to business. Uh, never you mind. Uh, stranger things. Uh, welcome to Blackstaff Tower. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, first and absolutely foremost, I must thank the five of you. Uh, I happen to be uh, quite close with a certain individual who I hear you helped out of a tight spot recently. Rainier Neverember and I go back many years and. Uh, Though he's quite a capable man, I, uh, well, I'm not terribly surprised that he got a bit, in, a bit in over his head, and I can't thank you enough for uh, assisting him out of that sticky situation. Happy to help. He, she says, yes, I imagine that you are, and that's why I've brought you here today. Uh, she turns sort of to focus her attention a little bit on Silme and says, um, you are quite the resourceful one, aren't you? 
So you have heard of me. <laughs> she says, well, uh, yes, in a manner of speaking. She says, it is part of my duty to keep an eye on the goings-on of the city, of the watch, uh, and of the magical goings-on here in Waterdeep. And uh, I've noticed on more than one occasion that you have provided, what shall we say, uh, consulting services for the city watch. Is that right? Well, you know, I follow the gold. <laughs> she says, yes, you do. But uh, judging by the way that I've seen you help out the guard and uh, approach the missions that you're on, you do enjoy your, your gold and your time, but there's a... There's not a, a bit of altruism somewhere down in there, deep inside, I believe. Maybe a little. <laughs> she says, well, that's what I'm counting on. She says, um, I've watched you for a while now, Silme, and your friends since you began associating with them. And I had ideas for the five of you, but your assistance of Rainier and uh, Floon solidified my decision to bring you here today and extend an invitation of sorts. Go on. She says, um, it is my belief that you all could do quite a bit of good here in the city of Waterdeep. And I would like to extend to the five of you membership in the Greyhands, my uh, force of agents that uh, set out to assist and deal with situations that perhaps the City Watch is unable to for one reason or another. So will we be part of the City Watch or apart from it? No, quite apart from it, she says. Uh, she says, the Open Lord and I uh, do work together at times, though uh, no one uh, would be surprised to hear that the uh, Lord Never Ember and I have little personal love for each other. That said, he controls the watch, and I control the grey hands. And it is my belief that you would do quite well with us. Uh, there may be times where you would work hand in hand with the watch, but your purposes would be mine, primarily, and more importantly, those of Waterdeep. Well, I might be interested, but I'm not going to speak for my compatriots. Would you... <laughs> We get to oh. join Force Grey. Force Grey, really? <laughs> she, <laughs> she smiles at you, Theron, and says, uh, perhaps in time, Force Grey is uh, an elite sect of the Grey Hands, but perhaps in time you all would prove yourselves of enough use and enough skill to join I, that rather maybe storied... I, What's that? Maybe just, maybe just meet them? <laughs> She says they're act they're not in the city at the moment. Oh. They are, and her face darkens ever so slightly. But she says they are um, addressing other matters of of utmost importance. Because I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just I get excited like this. She says no, not at all. Your enthusiasm is, as I've said, one of the many reasons that I believe that you would do well in Force Grey. She says I want to be very clear that by joining the Grey Hands, and yes, perhaps eventually Force Grey, you would be dedicating yourselves to the city of Waterdeep, not to the Watch, not to the Open Lord, not to the government here, not even entirely to me, though I will be your uh, commanding officer, as it were, your handler and the one to whom you report, but you would be pledging yourselves to the safety, security, and ultimate uh, success and prosperity of the city of Waterdeep. That is no small oath to make, but if you all are willing, one that I would have you make for my purposes. Would you give us time to speak on it, to think on it? She says, yes, of course, of course, please take the time that you need. Uh, I am not, uh, there are no pressing matters uh, for which you are needed at this time, uh, which is when I find most of my recruitments go the best. It never does well to force individuals into service because of some dire emergency, I find. Better that you have time to think and discuss and make your choice. She says, um, and of course, not all of you must join. I understand that you all have your own lives, your own, uh, your own desires and aims here in Waterdeep. And of course, those may differ from each other and from me. 
Not all of you need to join the Grey Hands. And if some of you do decide to join, you're more than welcome to continue working together, the five of you, when I do assign uh, missions and have need of you. She says, just uh, be very aware that the protections and the uh, rewards for my service are only meant for those who do pledge themselves to the city. I cannot promise the protection of my power, of my uh, tower, my staff, and my person to those who are not members of my organization. But you do as you think best. Uh, and let me know once you have made a decision. She sort of studies each of you in turn for a moment and she looks to you, Theron, and she says, you'll do nicely. Once you've reached a decision, why don't you speak with one of your ferried friends and have them come to me? She says, uh, I will understand and send a message once uh, that is done. It's one last question, if you wouldn't mind. Of course. Is there any pay involved? Altruism doesn't exactly keep the candle lit. <laughs> she says, no, 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 of course not. She says, uh, certain financial uh, uh, compensation can be arranged, of course. Uh, beyond that, you would have the protection of the Black Staff in matters relating uh, to any uh, missions or assignments that I were to give you. And of course, the uh, arcane might and resources of the Tower are... Uh, not at your disposal, but available should you have need of them. Both items and my own uh, magical prowess would be available to you. Okay. Much to think on, I believe. She looks to each of you for a moment uh, and just sort of takes you in, uh, tries to make on eye contact with you if you're willing, but even if you're not, she'll study each of you in turn. Uh, she finishes with Theron, since you were the one that she obviously knows something about, since she asked you to send, to, for you to be the one to send a messenger to her. And she sort of cocks her head and she says, you are, you are such a fascinating individual. Changes from day to day? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You're, you're an enigma wrapped up in a, in a mystery and dusted with a bit of intrigue. And what makes it all the more delicious is that you don't even know the half of it yet, do you? I, you know, then uh, obviously not if I don't know. <laughs> I do hope that you all will join me. I think you would all be useful, but also ever so interesting. Well, pull out. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I reach in and I pull the little mouse, the little tiny mouse out of my hood, and I just uh, have Roadkill look at Vasher and go, Now remember her face. You're going to need to find your way back here sometime, okay? Give her a little pet. Back into the hood. She smiles and uh, says, if there's nothing else, I will look forward to your messenger. And in the meantime, I believe all six of us have much to attend to. Yes, we do. I will take my leave then. And she begins to walk towards one of the uh, doors, one of the other doors in the chamber. Uh, just as she gets to, uh, she sort of gestures and the door that you came in through uh, reappears and is there. And just as she gets to that door, right as you all are about to take your leave, you notice uh, a figure step out of the wall right next to the door. Um, the figure's a tall uh, looks like a half elven woman, but she's sort of translucent, almost like a ghost, but somehow more material than that, uh, and all tinged with green. And she steps up to uh, Vajra and whispers something in her ear, and Vajra sort of nods and turns to her, and you just catch Vajra say, uh, find Kelvin, he's sure to know the answer. And she passes through the door. Hmm. He said, find who? Kelvin. 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 <laughs> Kelvin with a ben B. With a B. Oh, Kelvin. <laughs> I think uh, right before she's gone, if I can, I'm going to ah. yell out, wait, wait. Uh, she'll pause, sure, at the door, and she'll sort of uh, make a gesture to the uh, green spectral half-elven woman, uh, and that woman will nod and pass back into the wall, but Vajra will turn around to you. Who exactly are we helping? The people who need the help in this city, they're not the nobles like you and Never Ember. 
she the says people uh, down in their luck in the docks people who grew up like we did but if we were to join you who's actually benefiting she says, uh, oh, my friend, uh, you flatter me and honor me and perhaps discredit me a bit by, a bit by, con- <laughs> by considering me uh, a noble of this city. My family holds no noble blood. My ancestry is from without, not from within here at Waterdeep. Uh, but your question is well taken. As I said, you will be serving the city of Waterdeep, and I cannot promise you that the upper classes and the higher-ups here in Waterdeep will not benefit from your efforts. That said, I will make it a special point to do my best to ask you all to assist with matters that will make a difference in all of the city. Yes, including the lower wards from which several of you hail. She says, I... She sort of uh, smiles inwardly almost and says, uh, I know what it is like to work with and be a part of those who do not have the ability to uh, buy that which they want at any moment. And I appreciate your remembering them, even in this time uh, when you have the opportunity to step up in the world. It is noted. You will help all of Waterdeep. I cannot promise that it won't be the nobles, but yes, most assuredly, you will also help those like yourself. What about our past if we joined? She says, um, what about it? (laughs) There might be things in our past that would not be good to come to light. She says, um, If there is something that would keep you from serving the city appropriately, then I would ask you to recognize that and perhaps uh, think twice before joining the Greyhands. I have no interest in keeping you from your own personal goals and desires, but I also ask that your own personal goals and desires do not keep you from rendering the service which I require of you. Fair enough. Thank you for your time. Mm. Please, thank you all for joining me today. And now, if you don't mind, I I really must be going. I give her a wink. (laughs) She just nods back. Right then. I believe we have something to talk about. (laughs) I believe you do. Shall we go home? Back to the the manor, or? Yeah, I I see the manor. Yeah, the manor. All right. All right. So back you head, you know the way, it's chilly. Um, A couple of you, I think, are uh, walking about uh, strapped with some weapons, which get a few uh, looks, glances askance on the streets as you make your way back to Trollskull Alley, but uh, no one stops you or questions you as you're not actively brandishing them. You can pry my scimitars from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> no one wants to do that at this point. You haven't, like I said, you haven't brandished them in public, so you're you're good at this point. And you arrive back at uh, Trollskull Manor. So, so much to talk about. Why don't you all have a little chat about uh, Vajra and her offer to start, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we want to do with the manor house. I I, I like the offer, but my worry is I... I don't know if I'm going to become permanent Waterdeep resident. I, I have things and people in Silvery Moon that I do wish to get back to someday. A nomadic existence within them would have to be a question that needs to be answered, absolutely. I could send some letters. I, I, I do think I would like to be amongst a group of heroes. I, I felt really good about what we did last night. I would that's, down. that's my problem with it. Yeah, we've been doing all that. I don't know about you all, but that's been what I tried to do my whole life. Why do we have to join some big group now? I think it would make uh, our movement about the city a little bit easier. True. Is maybe the the payoff on that end. Not quite sure how I feel about being something official. Rules tend to come with things that are official. It would mean allies with abilities beyond what we have. 
we right now it's just Rowan and I as your casters, and we can't throw fireballs. We can't raise the dead yet, but it's they, there are others. We would be part of something bigger and have more resources. I liked her. Uh, she 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 gave off a very good impression, and she had good answers to the hard questions that were posed to her. Um, I, I don't know if I'm willing to join her specifically, but I would promote it to the the rest of you. But now have I noticed Rowan's wrists? <coughs> uh, uh, no, noticed what about him? Would I have noticed your 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 wrists? Uh, yeah, it, lo it looks like um, that, that it's actually probably um, the bandages that he was wearing, but there looks like there might be a little bit of red leaping through at this point because it's been a couple of hours since he changed them. Uh -huh. um, and in general, he looks a little pale, uh, or just just like he, you know, might have might have uh, either he's sick or uh, maybe w wounded. Just come here, darling. Before we get any further, just. Let, let me see your hands. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm okay. And he will like you know, back off, and and uh, I, I'm I'm completely fine. Uh, I've already taken care of everything. Uh, th thank you for your concern. Do you mind if I pull Rowan aside for a moment? Uh, I I I'm perfectly happy to talk with you. All right, I'll kneel down. Big brother, she singled me out. Is this yeah. something that I should? Is this something I should do? If you think it's something I should do, I, I trust your judgment, but I, I don't know what to do in this situation. I've, I've always lived kind of free. I think that this might be good for you. Um, I liked the words that she said that would be a part of the oath, uh, that, that we would be focusing on water deep itself and, and safeguarding the people that live here. Uh, and and I, I feel like my loyalties are a little bit more divided than yours. And this could be a wonderful opportunity for you, Sonia. All right. Are you okay, big brother? I am not right now, but I think I'm going to be. Can I hug you? Yes, of course. I give him a big old hug, and I just tossle his hair a little bit. Oh, uh... mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about you guys, but being able to do a little bit of help for those in the dark world, I'm not going to say that doesn't <clears throat> ring true with maybe some feelings I might be having. And she is quite pretty. <laughs> I had to cheapen it a little bit. Helping people. Uh, Where were they when we all needed help? That's I my question. That's I a good question. People that much higher up have the whole of the city to look after. We can deal with the smaller things, the, the personal things, but when when enemies are at the gate, is it us little adventurers that go to the gate to fight them off or the big leagues boss gray is is out there fighting dragons while we're fighting little Rats. brains with legs and grapefruits <laughs> with eyeballs Ugh. brains they, they're not oh, going to and and just it's not always there are levels to these things if if i would say i'd say we're level two and they're level 20. I am. Um... <laughs> and it would be good if we join them, we could affect change from within, could we not? Well, one of the things that she said is that not all of us had to join. Theron, I know that you might move through, and Annie, I know there are bigger things that you're thinking, and Rowan, you're already part of a wonderful force. I, I almost just wonder if if one of us should do it, or maybe perhaps Rocky and I, but I, I, I've born in the city. I'll, I'll die in the city. Yeah, I've dreamed about maybe leaving, but let's face it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be buried probably down the road. This, this might be good, but it, it's not for everyone. 
we don't all have to do it. It helps maybe just to have a little bit of a connection. That's true enough. I think I'll join with you, so. But we've got to make sure that we take care of the little guys. I don't think they'd be able to fight us if we wanted to take care of the little guys, especially with you by my side, Rockman. Well, if they did, and if they won, at least that grave would be side by side. That's true. That's true. <laughs> kind of a sad thought, though. <laughs> Gonna happen one day. Better get yeah. used to it now. Guys! That's, that's very true. <laughs> There's no use fighting from it. There's no use running. That's more fight. That's the final enemy we all have to face. Okay. That's a really good point. I'll walk over to Rocky and I'll kind of hold out my hand and kind of do the, the strength and honor. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, <laughs> I've got two options. I either die beside you all, or I outlive you by centuries. <laughs> well when you put it that way <laughs> don't need to rub it in there and... <laughs> well, at least you'll in that case make sure it's not a half-life friend <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right i think we've made our decision then rocky and i will join okay. leaving the four of you free the three of you free one, two, three, four, One, five. Two. How many? I was going to say, are you talking about the voice in your head? Are they not joining? It's just water. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't think I can. Um, what's that? I, I, I don't think that I can, uh, at least at this time. I, it's, it's a tempting offer, though. That's a good point, Rowan. Uh, this doesn't... I mean, Syl and I already work with the family. Is that, this isn't a problem, is it? I, I don't think it'll be a problem for you, uh, for, for either one of you. Uh, my responsibilities are, are different from yours and my, my loyalties in some respects can't be divided. And, and once I see more um, from her and, and from the organization, and the sort of things that they're asking you, I, I'm more than willing to revisit it. But I, I just, I can't, I can't risk an oath right now. Uh, it, it's, it's too much. Well, when it comes to loyalties, you come first, big brother. You were there when they right. weren't. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I'll, I'll, I'll give Rocky a hug now. <laughs> <laughs> So all about so little. <laughs> all right. So, uh, two of you are planning to join. Three of you are not. Am I correct? I, I'm planning. Oh, three of you are. Oh. Okay. So I wasn't sure. You were the one I wasn't sure about there. And okay, great. Uh, so, would you like to send Roadkill out now? Do you want to wait? I, I have I have my mouse. I'm ready to go. Um, so Annie, well, let's not I, seem too eager. Are there some other things that we could possibly talk? About? <laughs> I don't want to seem. Too I mean, eager. it'll take is a little mouse who's not that. <laughs> it'll take him some time to get to the tower. It's fine. Will he even get there alive? <laughs> yeah, we never hear back. <laughs> <laughs> He's a quick little mouse. He he'll go. He knows the secret ways. That's right. Sneak around. Now, don't stop to eat anything you find on the road. No, no, don't. Look, look I know there's some delicious foods in the castle hungry. ward, but no. But okay. hungry. Stop. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You you okay. go. Find the find okay. the pretty lady. Yeah. Find, find the pretty lady. And mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take yeah. a, a little a pink ribbon and wrap it around Roadkill's tail. Oh. Just so oh. everyone knows this is a pet. Oh, and not... oh, oh little tight. Little tight. Little tight. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Little, okay. little bow. Braid it. Okay. Okay. You're free. Go. As, as Roadkill scatters off. Pink? Really? Again? Okay. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> that was adorable. <laughs> Can I have you as a pet? You. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a pink bow. Uh, I'll put a purple bow on your tail. Okay. Oh, purple. Yes. Done. 
There we go. Uh, See, all right. So Rogue kills look on all their faces it. and just like, you know, that's actually the first time he's ever talked back to me. It's a little strange. <laughs> you were the only one who understood, to be clear. <laughs> oh, oh, that you couldn't understand that. Oh. <laughs> You know, um, they're a new, new look, uh, and you just keep getting a little bit weirder. Uh, I hope oh, you no. never have to meet me in winter. That's that's the most horrible me. I'm going to try <laughs> and be the best me I can be. But it is winter. Oh, we're in winter. Uh, you'll figure it out someday. Rocky, did you get it? I don't... But it's winter. It yeah. is winter. I'm not winter. Uh, I'm not alone. But it's... I, I'm spring. What are you now? I'm you're, spring. You're spring. Spring, but it's winter. It, it's I'm winter out here. there, but not in here. Okay. Shh. You keep huh. telling yourself that, buddy. Yeah, you're not going to like him. W would you care to explain this in in more detail? Because it it's all sounding very confusing so far. You need to brush up on your elvish. Uh, the the <laughs> Eladrin we we change as our mood changes. We're like, you know those rings that change color when the body heats? We're kind of like that. No. No? Okay. This is water deep, not the 90s. <laughs> well, Let's show this magic out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, you saw me yesterday. I was orange and I was, I was very generous, but I was also whiny. That's, that's autumn. Now I'm I'm happy. I have a home. I have people I consider friends, and I just want to say um, that I I get in a good mood and I turn into this. We're well, gonna have wonderful. to sort this out. By the way, this is not a good look for you. Um, uh, the brown rubs no, really no. don't go with the hair, do they? Oh, no, it it drowns you out. We're gonna have to figure out a better thing. Okay, we'll we'll dress you. We'll figure this out. Shopping trip. I consider you a friend too. Thank you. We'll montage this. Yeah. Maybe someday yes. Annie will like me and not glare at me like that. Well, is this version of you going to try and braid her hair? <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Well, then you're okay. one step closer. Right. Yay. So, so about <laughs> about the place, I, I do believe the tavern should be reset as a tavern. That way we'll have money coming in. We'll have we'll be able to make it lively. It's already mostly tavern, uh, but I do believe that um, we could set something up on the other floors. This place is massive. Well, Annie, do you want something here? I know you don't want to live here, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'll help out. Uh, maybe make the make the basement a smithy, mm. and uh, teach some teach some anger management to people with with smithing. Are you going to teach anger management or have <laughs> anger management? <laughs> both. Yes. Um, yes, both. I, I think, and then I, you know, I'm, I might like to keep the attic just as a just as a place to crash maybe once in a while. But yeah, don't really plan on staying here too much. Do you mind if I make a room in the tower? I know it's right above the attic. <sighs> Can we get some soundproofing or something? <laughs> well, you said you were only going to Why would you need that, time. Annie? Yeah. I, think, I think Annie knows still enough to know that um, she's going to have some visitors. And if Annie is there, she's probably going, uh -huh. she's probably just going to actually stay in the smithy if that happens. So well, uh, I think I took a look at the attic and it's like two parts. There's like the storage room and then the bedroom so i mean i'm sure i can do something i'm not even gonna make the joke it's not yep on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come I'll on just, i'll just join go. the dark side <laughs> if you if you yeah maybe i'll just stay in this in the basement if it happens if i if i happen to be around how about yeah. this i'll i'll <laughs> I'll hang a sock in the door no no okay good. so <laughs> how about this wants a uh theron wants a tavern and Ani wants a, a a what in the basement? A forge? Smithy. Yeah, a smithy. Like, okay, great. How about how about the rest of you? <laughs> I can't I can't talk about socks anymore. Uh well uh my idea for the place, uh, and and hear me out on this, is you, you know, especially with what Rocky was saying earlier about wanting to, to help people who are uh helpless, is is making a, a school, but but you know, not just a, a school, but a, a place where uh, kids who are just on the street and don't have any help and don't have any chance of getting help uh, can, can just get food. Um, 
and, and, you know, food and a trade is, it, it, it's life changing and it, it doesn't take a lot of work or space to provide that uh, for people who really need it. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we all have skills that we can bring to the table and that we can share with other people. And uh, I, I, I think that that would be the best thing that we can do with this place. And we can do lots of other things with it too. Uh, um, just having a smithy, you, you can teach people how, how to work it. Uh, having a tavern, uh, those are all skills that that are marketable and, and can, can, can be beneficial to people. Uh, so that's, that's just my idea. You don't have to convince me, big brother. I'm always for it. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that way we can help out those who need it. We can give back to the area and, you know, at least where we all grew up, you had to know how to scrap, right? So maybe we can take one of the rooms upstairs, push all the furniture to the side and teach some self-defense classes. What do you think? I think that's, that's absolutely beneficial. Not, not only as a, as a skill, but for, for safety purposes, um, especially if, if, you know, they, they don't want to stay here any longer. So a school right. with a tavern in the back. I like it. And if you really Basically want to the add, first floor. If you really want to add to that, uh, Annie, you're going to like this. We are going to piss off the merchant old neighbors. It's, they're going to hate us so much with all the noise oh. coming out of here. Oh, yes. Very much so. That's probably true. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Okay. They're going to take it up with us if they do have a problem. Exactly. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> and they will. <laughs> I love this. So Troll Skull Manor, the tavern school of witchcraft and wizardry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, so the first and biggest thing and uh, that you all are going to have to deal with is sort of getting this place then into shape. Uh, restoring the tavern part will probably be the easy part, right? And then you've got to install this smithy. You've got to install, uh, you know, whatever sort of other classrooms you all need. You're, of course, going to need to to spruce up any living quarters that uh, there, you know, you've been you've been OK, but like it would be nice to have some real furniture and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it being water deep, uh, you know, there are services for all of this and all of this is, is uh, easily, if not cheaply, acquirable. Um, now, I will say that I, I do know that some of you don't love interacting with uh, the various guilds of Waterdeep as a rule. Uh, how are we going to feel about involving them in the restoration of your, of your new property? A necessary evil. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, oh my my, God. Fight. Yeah, I love that fighting spirits. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my personal preference would, would be to use uh, criminal contacts to okay. find members of the guild that are willing that you know very low member low level ranking uh, have guild ties simply because they have to because you know sure. you can't operate in water deep unless you have them. Uh, and see if they'd be willing to take maybe a little less money overall, but a little bit more money under the table sure. uh, in order to help us out uh, and report that everything is completely on the up and up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, amongst the five of you, you have more than enough contacts to sort of begin to set that in motion. Okay, so one of the things I love about this this. Uh, adventure book that that's actually written in here is there's a whole like section about starting up this business and how the water Davian guilds work and like costs and things like that. So uh, what's written in the adventure is that to renovate the tavern to your specifications uh, and to get all of the licenses and contracts required for the guild, because who doesn't love a little bureaucracy in their D and D uh, normally? Yeah. Right normally would cost uh, 1,250 gold upfront. 
I think that I love this idea of sort of finding ways around the guilds without totally snubbing them for, you know, in the interest of playing ball, as it were. Um, so I love that. I think you all can sort of get that down to a thousand gold. Now, I will also say that between the uh, Toss Couple Porridge Pot family and your sort of holdings, um, Theron coming from Silvery Moon and whatever holdings they have, you know, back home outside of uh, their their character sheet gold, right? And the fact that Ani also has, uh, you know, maybe not a premier smithing business, but like it's a thing that you do and make money off of, right? I think that you all could scrap together that amount of money from your various families and businesses. So I'm not gonna like make nickel and dime you on your character sheets for that thousand gold. Um, what I am going to nickel and dime you on, though, is the weekly expenses. Uh, because you're going to have to hire staff, right? Even if you all are doing all the teaching on your own, like a tavern is a big business to run, and it's going to require, like, clean uh, bar towels and deliveries of um, food to go along with the booze. I know that part of the Toss Cobble Porridge Pot family, Rowan, I know one of your cousins, does a little bit of alchemy and brewing and distilling. So my, my sister, actually. Oh, your sister, not cousin, sister. Oh, that's all right. Um, it's a big family. <laughs> <laughs> so your sister will be providing a, a good bit of the uh, alcohol that's going to be served. But there are other weekly expenses, right? There's our 10-day expenses, right? There's staff, there's deliveries, there's perishables, there's all kinds of stuff. So again, using your various contacts, um, a couple of you have actually have the criminal contact uh, feature as part of your background. Um, Rowan, also, you are particular friends with uh, Bonnie, mm -hmm. the barmaid at the Yawning Portal. And as you're sort of talking about this, you actually mention it to her over the course of, you know, however many days that you all are working on this. And she actually mentions that she has four folks who she thinks would be, they're a little inexperienced, but they're willing to learn. And she thinks they would be perfect to uh, staff the bar and would be willing to do so at, you know, with the deal that you laid out, maybe a little less overall and, but sort of working something out to get one over a little bit on the guilds. <laughs> um, well, well, that would be extremely appreciated, Bonnie. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, she nods and, you know, smiles and uh, tells you that they'll, that to let her know once everything is up and running and she'll send them along to, to get started helping you all out. Will do. Um, Sill, you have contacts in the City Watch, and, uh, you know, as as somebody mentioned, I think it was Theron mentioned, like, this isn't going to be the quietest establishment on Trollskull Alley, so you sort of are able to uh, chat with the, some of the City Watch uh, up here in the North Ward. Your, your, most of your contacts are in the Dock Ward, but you sort of make some connections and, and meet some folks in the North Ward, and you're able to sort of make sure that you all don't get uh, disturbed too much in case there are, you know, excessive noise complaints or just like generally like rich people who are upset because there are humans out on the, or people, because you're not all humans, I guess, out on the streets after dark, right? So you sort of, you're able to sort of finesse that and make sure that that goes pretty well. Um, and yeah, so it's gonna take 12 days altogether for the place to get up and running. We're gonna deal with some stuff in then and we'll sort of montage in and out to see how the manor is coming along. But once it's up and running, you all will have a fully functioning tavern business that you can make money off of and contacts and hear rumors at and blah, 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 yes? And a bedroom in the tower. And a bedroom in the tower. <laughs> no, we're not starting a brothel, so. We're not starting a one-person brothel, okay? <laughs> and Kithri is going to love helping you with that. I love it. Oh, she's got me a new pair of fuzzy manacles. So oh? Happy. Oh? <laughs> All right. So about halfway through the uh, about halfway through the renovations, why don't each of you pick a room and tell me how it's coming along? I'm putting you on the spot here. I know we didn't talk mm -hmm. about this beforehand, but we're halfway through the renovations. Tell me what the place is looking like now. Anyone can start. I'm not going to put you on the spot too much. Uh, I guess I'll start with the library. Okay, great. Um, I love that. And uh, I have prestidigitation, so I'd probably just start by making it spotless great uh, yeah absolutely and, and just trying to figure out what the resources are uh, as far as books 
What existed in there before, not not a ton. Um, there were a few sort of uh, like ledgers and stuff from the previous tavern business. There are a few uh, like cookbooks and uh, various like books on on spirits and and ales and stuff like that. But most of what's in there is is decayed and falling apart. Okay. Uh, well, then I will I will just try to sort it out into a classroom sort of setting. Um, right. Try to find some some chairs and desks, uh, a chalkboard if I can, uh, just to make it make it that sort of uh, area. Got it. Love that. Yeah, and you can absolutely get your hands on that uh, sort of stuff as you're as the guilds are bringing in stuff. You know, part of part of what who you're working with, you know, whether you like it or not, is uh, the Woodworkers Guild, uh, the specific name of which I'm forgetting at the moment. But all of the guild names are so great that I'm going to look it up here. Uh, and so they're able to sort of, you know, either get their hands on or make, um, excuse me, make any of those sort of desks and things that you would need for this, for this room. Uh, while I look up the name of that particular guild, who's next? Who's got a room they want to do stuff to? I'll tell you, I'll go. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Theron has taken the master bedroom as their own and, uh, they're, they're, trying to bring in just a nice modest bed but because they've always wanted a bed they don't really know what to go for right. so they go for just this oversized thing and uh <laughs> and furniture and such all secondhand of course more refurbished from sure but sure. uh in a in a closet they're going to set up a, a small shrine to ilmater but behind the shrine they're going to have a secret shrine to suni Oh, okay. All and, of the things. And, uh, yeah, but keep that one tucked away nice and deep. Sure, sure. Uh, it looks like this, uh, going back to you, Rowan, the guild doesn't have that, that fun, this particular guild doesn't have that fun of a name. I think oh. it is the Carpenters, Roofers, and Plasters Guild, so, meh. Nothing like tumblers and plumbers. Uh, yeah. No, some of them, some of them are like the solemn order of recognized furriers and woolmen. That's what I was sort of hoping for, but nah, not just. I would, right. I would in general much rather work with the ones that have a really pompous name. Right. <laughs> I feel right. like that's just an indication that, <laughs> that I don't want to work with. I love it. <laughs> All right, so we've got the library. We have the master bedroom, which is which is coming along nicely. Who's next? Um, I'll take the the common room that's on the second floor. Okay, uh, great. It's it's not too difficult of a job. We just gotta make sure there's enough room around to uh, to have a bunch of people in there and moving around and working out and everything. Um, maybe trying to get some kind of racks on the walls to hold staves and other things like that, uh, if possible. Um, is there any damage to the inside of these rooms, specifically the common room? Um, I think particularly, like, you're going to look a little more closely at, like, the stability of, like, the floors and any other structures that are in that room. Because if you all are going to be moving about and fighting, you want to make sure that, like, somebody doesn't put a foot through the floor or whatever. So or I wall. think, you, right. So I think you also work pretty closely with the Carpenters, Roofers, and Plasters Guild, but also, I just spit on my microphone because I'm classy. <laughs> um, but also the uh, Stonecutters, Mason, Masons, Potters, and Tile Makers Guild. And uh, they actually come in and they help you sort of lay a floor, a new floor on top of the wooden floor in this common room to really sort of reinforce it uh, and give it some nice structural integrity for, for jumping about and uh, training combat in. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll try to... I'll do as much as I can sort of on my own. I'm sure. actually training Mason's tools. Oh, and great. Whenever possible, I'll be walking around with these blocks of concrete or whatever it is that we're using stone and just kind of boom, 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 and slamming them, chipping away, making them perfect for the walls or wherever they're going. Yeah, I love that. So like half of the uh, Guild of Stonecutters like love that you're helping them out and like love that you're skilled and are like, you know, shooting the shit and like talking trade with you. And the other half are just like pissed that you're not a guild member and think that like are just not okay with you doing this work. Um, but you're good at it, so they sort of don't say anything because it's also less work for them that way. Uh, <laughs> is there any particular pattern of like tiles or stone that you want to inlay into this floor since you're designing it right now? Oh, I'll have to think on that. Okay, think on that, I love it. Uh, who's next? 
I guess I'll go. Okay, go. Uh, first off, I'd like to shout out to my husband who just made me this tea. Yay! I couldn't stop coughing, but we don't have a teapot, so you like... Yeah, like, this is awesome. Okay, so... <laughs> um, I guess I'll take my bedroom that okay. I'm going to put in the turret. I'm going to make, like, the tower part. Okay. My bedroom. All right. And uh, Auntie K and I are going to decorate it uh, with, like, the windows and, like, a big bed in the middle and, like, a seating area um, and, like, a secret back entrance to get into it. So that okay. I'm there being Ani and her attic suite. Okay. Um. Just making it really plush and over the top. I love but that. But the, the thing is, like, it's just you can see out and just yeah. look all over and just, like, nothing can sneak up on her. I love that. I think, like, it's this, probably this, one of the smallest rooms in the house and is requiring the most, like, reconstruction and, like, renovation. I. Um, it's, like, it. her own little corner. It's not so much that she wanted it big. She just wanted to be up high. Oh, no. It's not any bigger. It's just... You have the most specific requirements for your space. It must be precise. <laughs> I love it. All right, Annie, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think the first, before she even starts renovating anything, though, she tries to find that missing chess piece that was in the dragon oh, chess set yeah. in the library. Um, if she doesn't find that, she'll get a replacement for it and then also go to each person and instruct them to specifically not get rid of the chess set and they better keep it or else in like really intense. Uh, to I each one. love that. So uh, we'll move it every other day. I forgot all about that chess piece. Well done. I'm giving you inspiration. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Why don't you make me... Make me an, 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 an no wisdom perception check, uh, and we'll just sort of see if you're able to find it or if you have to have one commissioned. Why don't you make it with advantage? Because something tells me you would really spend a lot of time looking for this thing. Yeah. Uh, uh seventeen. So, uh, sort of, it's actually upstairs in that common room as Rocky is, as they're sort of tearing up part of the floor to set in the new tile and stone floor, it is somehow like fallen into a little crack and it's sort of underneath the floorboards up there. And you just happen to be walking through because you're going to instruct all of the stonemasons that are up there not to mess with the chest set. And you happen to spot it sort of in one of the cleared areas. I want to say that like Rocky's almost like going to like walk on it or even like make a chop towards it. Something I go, no, <laughs> and, like dive for it. And yeah, I'm like, don't, the chest set, Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Can, can we just agree that Syl moves a chess piece every other day? Well, just, <laughs> as long as it's not missing from the board. If it is missing from the board, Annie's going to have problems with it. Absolutely. No, that's what she means. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, They're going to end up in Theron's stuff, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> Where else so would they end up? <laughs> Barring com keeping to trying to keep completing the chess set, and I would say Annie starts to play it too, and so then still takes a piece and whatnot. But um, she goes down to the. She kind of divides her time between the smithy and the basement, and instructing and helping to create vents and things, and instructing on the layout of it, um, mm -hmm. and then up into the attic, and um, she's. I don't know who she'd work with on this, but anybody that can help her put a lot of, um, you know, carpet or, um, you know, just sound absorbing things on the wall, things like that. Uh, just so none of it leaks through at all. Um, <laughs> so grabbing some leftovers from a sales room. I guess so. I don't know. It might be too gaudy for, for Annie, but um, she might take what she can get. Uh, and, she she does put like a, a bit in there, but also um, make sure that one of the floorboards underneath the bed can be popped open and stuff some secret things in there. All right, mm. so many secrets. I love so, it. Well, uh, well, this kind of day is well. This is going on. You said twelve days. So uh, yeah, so we're about halfway through the process at this point, but it'll take a total of twelve days. Yeah. So the last thing would be the tavern. So mm. Theron is taking their time every, between working, uh, going around the house looking for the ghost. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. So as these six days uh, go on, one of the 
you, Theron has, always has their eyes out for the ghost. Uh, and for the first several days, you really don't notice any haunting, much to your dismay. Um, and then it's not a ghost, but you, you wake up one morning, Theron, and you head out and uh, you notice that a whole section of, uh, of the, the common, uh, it's not at the common room, the tap room on the first floor, which really like, as you said, is sort of the last thing that you guys are, are heading for in terms of renovations. You notice that the bar area is, there's a new bar installed and it has been cleaned and it's uh, not stocked yet, but the bar itself has been, has been taken out and redone and, and installed. And then a few days later, you notice a patch, or Ani, you actually notice a patch of um, the basement where the smithy is gonna go, where sort of uh, there was a big pile of like broken stone and stuff that had just been moved to one corner before it was gonna be taken out uh, as part of the cleanup is completely swept clean and, and ready for the installation of the forge itself. Uh, and it's things like this, it's, it's little advancements to your, uh, to your renovations that are the first thing that you all begin to notice. It's my bed made or something? And <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, is my mom somewhere in here? Um, and so you all, I assume sort of talk about these things as you as you notice them, because all of you know that the place is supposed to be haunted and this if this is the way it's haunted, like by- Yeah, this is stupid. Awesome. And, um, <laughs> Sill, you, uh, one day while you're all there working, you hear a voice and it takes you a moment because you totally think that it's, it must be the ghost. And then you realize it's a voice that you recognize. Uh, and in fact, it is just Vajra, uh, who has uh, received <sighs> the, the message and finally had a chance to get back to you. Uh, and she tells you uh, that uh, Roadkill is safe and sound uh, and to let Theron know that Roadkill is safe and sound, uh, but that she is thrilled that the three of you will be joining the Grey Hands. Uh, when you've a moment, pop by Blackstaff Tower. Um, there are a few things that I should give you, uh, and then actually I have need of your assistance. All right, darling. Can she hear me whenever I respond? Uh, you can respond, yeah. <laughs> You could respond to this message. <laughs> All right, I'll pop by soon, darling. All right. She doesn't respond again, but you know, you can tell that she heard you. I can feel the shrug. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I guess now is as good as time as any. I will go find Rocky and Saren, and can we like agree that uh -huh. Silme has dressed Saren? to the night oh oh yes. like she has a beautiful like leather waist corset because she doesn't need a much here mm -hmm. and that she's got a nice flowy shirt uh -huh. and like a, a better color let's see brown hair i'm gonna go with red i'm gonna go with a red cloak around her and 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 like a nice skirt that has pockets Okay, yes, absolutely. All all skirts and dresses in Waterdeep have pockets. And, and <laughs> because they're and, not dumb. Exactly. And like good pockets, not like the wee pockets. Yeah, no, like, not like a yeah. little like I can fit a quarter in this. Like I it's can fit my I, the guild. I can fit like my <laughs> iPad in it. Yeah. And sensible shoes. Yes. Oh, of course. So she's she's dressed warmly. She's got, you know. Yeah, that's good because it is getting colder. We're we're getting closer to midwinter and it's it's getting colder. So like a thick shirt and like a jacket and then like the cloak. And she's she's looking good. Not mm -hmm. too good, but good. <laughs> I just I feel kind of exposed. This is odd. I'm not used to this. But thank you. Well, I mean, it, it <laughs> honey, that's like the most covered up thing I own, so just be thankful. <laughs> How do you not freeze? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just we're not going to talk about this. All right. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Fasra has um, has contacted me. She's got a uh, little roadkill in her uh, loving hands and uh, oh. has bid us to her side whenever we're ready. And I feel now is as good a time as any. Are you ready? 
I'd, I'd love to go back, yes, and get my little pet, but mostly also I, I, I thought that uh, the Blackstaff Tower was amazing. It is quite, so why don't we go get um, Urga and let's go sign our lives away, eh? Now, I just want to make sure, this, we're still allowed to be friends with Rowan and Annie? We're still allowed to go on adventures with them? Oh. They're going to have to pry this family from my cold dead hands. Well, I'm going to pry their life from them. Do you understand me? Okay. It'll be all right. All right, let's go get the love. And I'll go find, we'll go find Rocky. All right. So we are able to find Rocky and you all head over to Blackstaff Tower. Uh, entrance is much the same. Uh, presumably though, oh, Annie's not there to yell for Vajra this time. So what's the plan to get into the tower? <laughs> I would just, I just walk in. I'm going oh, in I dancing. Just walk up. Oh, she's dancing and sounds of I... music style. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, the doors the doors appear right away as soon as you all enter the courtyard dancing, um, and in you head, and uh, Vajra is there, and she the first thing she does is she hands Theron a uh, roadkill and gives him a little <gasps> scritch on the head. Um, Where do I keep you now? Oh, can oh, I hold right. you? Oh, sure. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she uh, bids you all to follow her and she guides you through one of the doors in the octag that octagonal receiving chamber uh, and into what looks like so what looks like some sort of a uh, laboratory or workspace uh, and she sort of gestures for you all to stand on the far side of the room and she uh, she nods to each of you and she says I thank the three of you very much for uh, deciding to join the Greyhands. You will be uh, most, uh, your work will be most appreciated and uh, I believe we will be lucky to have you. Please do extend uh, my thanks as well to the two of your party that did not decide to, jo decide to join. It is good that they were able to recognize uh, in themselves that perhaps this was not the best fit for them. And please give my thanks and my appreciation uh, for for that honesty. I would um, like to make one thing clear. Please. We may work for you, but they are still our family. Uh, he, she says, absolutely. Uh, as I have said before and will continue to say, uh, and have no problem continuing to say, uh, you all... Uh, are my will become my agents. You will become the agents of Waterdeep, but I understand that you have your own lives, your own families, your own desires, your own needs. Uh, and it is not my intention, nor is it my interest, to become embroiled in those affairs. Your family is your own, and it should and will stay that way. Fine. Then let's see what kind of good we can do. She nods and smiles and holds her hand out, and this enormous well, black staff, uh, appears in her hand. It's it's half again as tall as she is with a sort of um, almost an ax head shaped topper, uh, one end of which is carved into the likeness uh, of, a, of a snarling wolf head. Uh, and the, I'm, the, the uh, staff just, even for those of you who are not magically inclined, just crackles with power. Uh, it's, it is, overwhelming and uh, power just crackles in the room. And she sort of uh, knocks the staff on the floor and underneath the three of you uh, begin to glow these uh, large arcane sigils, one underneath each of you. And uh, her eyes begin to glow with a similar color. And she just very simply says, uh, I don't stand, and her voice has a sort of uh, resonance to it now that wasn't there before. And she simply says, I don't stand on much ceremony, but I do require your oaths that you will serve the city of Waterdeep above. And she pauses here for a moment and she says, perhaps we'll rewrite this bit of the oath for you all, that you serve the, the city of Waterdeep faithfully whenever you are asked and that you never engage in any activities that would imperil the city or its people. Do I have your oaths? 
I get behind that quite well, yes, actually. Yes, Agree. You, have, you have my oath. She says, uh, you understand that though the oath seems simple, it will be binding in a way to me. And that your responsibilities to the city in which you live will be uh, uh, codified through this oath. And she looks to each of you again for confirmation. I understand. And she says, and each of you makes these oaths of your own free will and in the hopes that you will make Waterdeep a better place. Yes, I will. Do. <laughs> she says, we're not getting married, darling. Uh, <laughs> codified. Um, she nods and she taps her staff on the ground one more time and uh, six figures, uh, all similar to the one that you saw the last time you were here in that they are green and somewhat spectral. Um, most, uh, let's see, I believe, oh, how much do I remember my water deep history right now? I think two of them are women and the rest of them are men of uh, either human elf or half elf uh, descent, and they all sort of look upon you uh, as Vajra smiles and says, in that case, welcome to the Grey Hands. And all seven of the figures uh, nod in unison and she taps her staff on the ground one more time, and the figures disappear as do the sigils underneath you. Do we have cool tattoos? Uh, not that you can see. Damn. <laughs> All right, now what? She says, ah, straight to business then, is it? She says, well, good. Uh, she says, I do have something to ask of you. Um, there is an informant of mine. Uh, to call him a friend would be, uh, well, misleading, I suppose. Uh, but he tends to have his ear to the ground and I have, heard strange rumblings about goings on within the city, but nothing that I've been able to confirm. She said, I would ask that you seek out this individual uh, and ask what he's heard about threats to the city of late. Uh, he resides in a cave on the side of Mount Waterdeep. Uh, he is a monk named Hlam. What? A monk named Hlam who lives in a cave on the side of Mount Waterdeep. You heard me, darling. <laughs> You're gonna have to spell that, you hear you? What? H L A M. H H L A M. A M. So the H is silent. Yeah. Well, the ish. Yeah. No, I, uh, I heard it perfectly well. Hlam. Hlam. Okay. I'm How not dignified we are. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so she says, um, just if you would, uh, make your way up to him. Uh, ask him if he's heard anything about threats to the city of late and, um, and she sort of smirks when she says this, but uh, do try not to annoy him or overstay your welcome. I'm not very good at not doing that. <laughs> she, we'll says, keep him honest. Uh, she says, I got that impression and I, uh, well, I think this will be a good starter mission for the three of you. Uh, can, are we allowed to take our friends with us? She says, oh, of course, of course. As I said before, they're welcome to accompany you on anything that I ask you to do. Just understand that should you all find yourselves in a spot of trouble, legal or otherwise, uh, I can only guarantee safety, protection and assistance to the three of you. Understood. All right. Well, let's go to Hlam. <laughs> <laughs> they want to have a little bit more phlegm in there, darling. <laughs> she laughs and nods and says, uh, excellent, uh, off with you now. I uh, look forward to your reports. And she taps her staff on the ground again and you all find yourselves outside, just outside of Blackstaff Tower in the courtyard. Oh, well, that's disorienting. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. <laughs> Rocky, how's your conscience? How's my conscience? Yeah. Well, she didn't really answer my question of how is it codified. What? Oh, I don't even know if he heard that. Oh, no, I did. 
Oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I think well? if we betray the city, she'll know. And I'm pretty sure we'll just die. Uh, maybe not That's die, fine. but maybe we'll get a burn in a place that we don't want to burn. By whose uh, definition is the problem? Uh, uh, we do not pose a threat to the city in any way. I believe we'll be safe. Well, that's a that's a big if, but sure. We just let, need <laughs> to learn to have faith in people, right. Rocky. Ooh, no. <laughs> what was that? You just need to learn to have faith in people. Hmm. Uh, stick around for a little while, kid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what's the plan? Back to Troll Skull? You're going straight to Mount Waterdeep? You're putting that off? What's the plan? Well, I think... Um... I never feel comfortable going on too many things without our family. So what do you say we uh, go pick up the kids? <laughs> I'm sure Annie will be happy to get out. I'm sure she's not having too much fun. She didn't seem to like the district in itself. And maybe getting into the mountains, some fresh wild air will give her an opportunity to hit something. And she's probably not too happy about you stealing that chess piece either. What, what, what chess <laughs> piece? Ah, uh, never mind. Shall we? Can can I have her kill it back from your bosom? Oh, but he's so warm and so soft. <laughs> right, hold on. Hold on. Um. How come no one says that about me? <laughs> oh. So as you uh as you pull out uh Roadkill and hand him back to uh Theron, Roadkill sort of says to Theron, She smells good. Why don't you smell like that? Yes. And wear her clothes, maybe it'll rub off on me sometime. <laughs> Work on it. <laughs> so, it's canon, so I, guys. So my smells good. I need to Y'all. buy some, some perfume or something from you. Honey, I think <laughs> it's called bathing. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> All right. So as you head back to the Troll Skull Manor, uh, I have to read you a poem that one of our viewers wrote about the monk clam in the chat. Thank you, Rob Bacons. Here is his poem. There once was a monk named Slam who thought who fought with a oh, I guess Hlam, who fought with a bow staff and palm. He battled his dragons till it blasted a flagon and required a healer and balm. Uh, thank you, uh, Rob Bacons. That is my dude. So good. <laughs> I love him to pieces. Hi, Bacons. So good. All right. Uh, so you won't make your way back to the manor. Um, Catch Rowan and Ani up on everything, I presume. And head off. Okay. Shall we go on an adventure? Yes. Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go right and it's not the sewers this time, so this this is better than anything we've done in the past, right? Vastly improved. Big brother. A fascinating character, sort of person that just sort of sets up on a mountain by themselves. Can I kneel down to Rowan and say, are we doing better? Yes, yes, much. Thank you for asking. Uh, very much appreciated. It was good to have something to work on. I'm feeling great. <sighs> Don't bullshit me now. I'm not, I'm not. I, I, if anything, I feel, I feel better. Uh, I, con- content? I, I, I don't know, it's difficult to describe. We can talk later. All right, well, just know that I'm here if you need me. I, I will, thank you. I'm part of the Grey Force. I know! <laughs> so weird. So weird. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's cool. <laughs> We're new. We're new. Right, right. <laughs> right. Um, right. So no. was it like, was it like really magical again inside? Did she do any like crazy magic? Did you have to? Yeah, she like, she did like, f- called forth her big black staff and then slammed it down and then like all these sigils lit up and like all of a sudden like oh we had to make an oath and like we might die if we break it we don't know um i don't know she said something where if we endanger the city she'll know but we don't know if we're gonna get hurt or not rocky's a little nervous i'm a little nervous (laughs) i really Um, wish i'd been there i could have like taken notes i mean obviously i wouldn't have been swearing anything but i feel like this is something someone should have written down (laughs) maybe you should just take a second and just write down as much as you can remember just in case it comes back to bite uh yeah Uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh I don't like these ghosts. We should probably leave. We should probably leave. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right. We aren't. All right. 
Are we, are we equipped? Okay. Have we got all the supplies we need? Yeah. yeah. What do we need? Just I've, enough to walk, right? I've never been to the mount, top of Mount Wasity before. I, it doesn't look like it's going to be just, let's stroll over there for the morning. Uh, <clears throat> warm clothes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to take the better part of the day. <laughs> I think oh, Rocky can walk behind Theron and sort of, you know, firm hand on the back slap. It. It'll feel like home. <laughs> oh, <so> you, maybe. <laughs> I'll just put an extra cloak around her. He'll be fine, darling. Thank you. Shall we? <laughs> All right. All right. We'll off. All right. So you head off to Mount Waterdeep, which is just outside, uh, sort of. Uh, forms one of the almost one of the borders of the city uh and you head that way and it's there are paths and and so it's not like you have to like have rock climbing gear to get up to this cave but it is it is a bit of a of a hike definitely a strenuous hike um takes you the better part of the morning and early afternoon to get up there uh and as you reach the cave i need all of you to please make constitution saving throws to see how well the hike went for you Mm. No. <laughs> That's either really well or really not well. Uh, really well, really well. Okay, great. Fair, and let's start with you. 10. Uh, okay. Roll a d4 for me, and I'll come back. Rocky? Sorry, it's muted. I had a 10 as well. Also roll a d4 for me. Rowan? 21. Oh, very well for you. Natural Still? 20. Nice. Yeah. Still? Eight. Uh, D4, please. And Ani. 18. All right. So Rowan and Ani are totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. Theron, what did you roll on your D4? Two. Okay, Rocky? Uh, a one. Okay, and Syl? Four. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Okay. I figured um, it would. <laughs> I rolled really well on the D4, really crappily on the D20. Yep. That's in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, those numbers are how many levels of exhaustion you all reached. Oh, the oh, four levels of exhaustion? No. Yeah. Oh, gosh, your hit point maximum is half. Climb. So let's just real Whoa. quick for the, so for Rocky with just one, you just have disadvantage on ability checks for the, until you take a long rest. <laughs> uh, Theron, you, your speed is also halved, which was part of why this was such a rough climb, because about halfway up, you just slowed down big time. So did Syl. We'll get to her in a moment. Um, it will take you two long rests uh, to normally, uh, to naturally reduce or get rid of your exhaustion. <laughs> Syl, it's going to take I'm you dead. four long rests. I'm just dead. You're not dead. You have disadvantage on ability checks. Your speed is halved. You also have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving <laughs> throws, and your hit point maximum is halved. You feel like absolute death. I shouldn't have been drinking last night. <laughs> um, so basically, you're like you're almost dragging Syl. If you, if Syl had one, has one more level of exhaustion, her speed would be reduced to zero. So you're almost dragging Syl by the time you all get to the cave mouth. I don't even get there. inspiration for any of my flirting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't fix this. You're literally bringing a corpse into this. Not quite. <laughs> Six so I, is death. So I have n not, wait, so if I have 17 hit points, do I have eight? You hit have points? eight hit points, yes. But that'll go away. You'll go back to 17 once you take one long rest because that'll reduce your, your exhaustion level to three. So you're, you're okay. Oh yeah, sure. Three. Just don't, just just don't fight me, anything today. It's, anything else? It's gonna today. make me three more days before I can even like roll and possibly hit something. <laughs> All right. So I think, you get up to I the think game. At some point, uh, uh -huh. still, you know, was almost was almost giving out right on the march, uh, oh, yeah. and so, like Rocky offered to help her or maybe even like carry her as far as he could or something, and that's why he's exhausted. What Definitely. Do you think? Definitely, because otherwise it what doesn't seem like a like a climb that would have that would have exhausted you. But yeah, that's definitely uh, Rocky. Uh, why did you let me have that fifth ale? Why? I told you not to. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what is, what is that? What was he gonna do? <laughs> Oh, I, I hid it in the library. I thought that was the least likely spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to read, you dick. <laughs> well, you told me you couldn't teach me. Uh, oh, so good. Oh, man. All right. We're, we're going to have a very strong talk later. <laughs> Annie, right. can Amazing. you just drag me? I know you won't carry me, but can you at least just drag me, please? <laughs> 
Uh, I I think you would be surprised that Annie actually does and doesn't say anything. Doesn't no no nasty comment and no rolling the eyes or anything like that. She's just a short uh, Darren. Oh thank yeah. You. I'll just lay out the cloak here and just pull the cloak. It'll be like a sled. It'll get us a lot faster than dragging my feet along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, during during one of the long rests, uh, if I could use cobbler's tools to really like, you know, buff up everybody's shoes, <coughs> make sure that you know uh, that they're they're walking as comfortably as possible. Especially Sil Mason, she seems to be having a really tough time. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and except for Rocky, because he doesn't wear them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't even need to check. I mean, that's your family business. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, before we get to that, though, you are here. You do run into, or not run into, but find uh, the monk Hlam. Oh. Uh, you find inside a, a venerable, is the nice way to put it, uh, human man sitting cross-legged and meditating in the cave. He's got simple, pretty light looking robes on, which just makes some of you colder just to look at. Uh, Cause it's winter, it's cold and you're up on a mountain. So it's real cold. Uh, but he's just sort of sitting there very quietly. He, I mean, he barely looks like he's breathing, honestly. He's so still. Oh my gosh, she's dead. <laughs> hey, come! <laughs> Annie, uh, not dead. Annie, I think we should probably take a step back. I think that this is like a, a, a thing for, for you. I mean, like your first big assignment. Oh, oh yeah, for them. Sorry, I yelled already. I don't know. Maybe I woke him up. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, how about we just stay back here and I'll make us a nice fire and we can just try our best to get warm. That All sound right. good? good? Good luck, guys. <laughs> Let us know if you need anything. <laughs> I think I left uh, a toe halfway down the mountain. Sorry. Um, uh, I, I will create bonfire. Sense. Great. I love that. Oh, oh that's yeah. new. Ooh, nice right, and warm um, over there. Excuse me, Mr. <sighs> Mr. Uh, he okay, cracks, oh, good. poor Sill, cracks open one eye. Hi. And then slowly cracks open the other. Oh, so... You are awake. Hopefully we did. Wakey, we just came a very long way to talk to you. First, first return to us. Do you have a moment? Mm. Uh, he sort of stares at you for a while. He blinks once. And then he begins to sort of unfold himself from his sitting position as he stands and nods to you. Thank you. Give me one second. Um... I'll slap Theron. Why don't you try? Uh, and <laughs> yes, uh, we were just came to find out what uh, <laughs> you, um, Vajra, the the black staff, sent us up here. Um, we were new initiates into the Grey Hand, and we were asked to find if you have any knowledge that we can take back from here to there. He says uh, he very sort of slowly takes that in. And then he says, um, I have much knowledge, young one. Far too much for you to take in one trip. What does Vajra want of me? She wants to know, excuse me, sorry. She wants to know if there's any threats to the city. Ah, always an eye out for danger, that one. Yeah. Sometimes her vigilance blinds her. Well, what do you mean by that? He says, uh, it will be clear in time. Mm, I hate surprises. Do you have any information that we could bring to her? He says, of course, but how do I know that you are agents of the Black Staff? Well, does the fact that we just pulled our asses up this big freaking mountain be enough? I don't see anybody normally doing that. He says, oh, visitors come for many reasons. Hmm, creepy. <laughs> I just... Why... 
why doesn't ah, why doesn't one of you make me a charisma persuasion check at triple disadvantage <laughs> well maybe not you so i mean it can be you if you want <laughs> uh, with with the pep talk that i gave earlier that you know hey this is your first big assignment could i uh -huh. have given them inspiration absolutely okay so Absolutely. you all you all have a D six of uh, bardic inspiration if you would like to apply that at any time. Uh, let me let me just say we we've taken an oath and there was a staff and six ghosty ghosts that came and uh, <laughs> something happened and we were told that if we ever betrayed the city she would know. I'm, I'm that's that's what I remember of the ceremony. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, we weren't given a token or a marker or anything. Uh, and uh, that's a 15 for my persuasion. <coughs> Actually, I'd, I'd, I'd like to aid if I can. Sure. So you okay. can roll with advantage. Okay. And I guess oh. after he says, or um, they say whatever they say, um, they'll go up and be like, it's true. She didn't give us any token, but We've fought for this city for a long time, and that's what we aim to continue to do. I like it. That helps bring right, it up Darren. to the 19. Okay, great. So he sort of very slowly takes in what the, the three of you have said to him, and he, uh, he sort of nods, and he says, You seem sincere. A rare quality these days. Hmm. He says, Yes. I do have a message for the Black Staff. Tell her that evil's twin hides its face for now. Expect that to change before winter's end. Evil's twin? How cryptic. That change before winter's end. She will either understand or she will not. That is of no concern to me. Well, if you just tell us who the twin is, we can go fight him. <laughs> he almost looks like he might have thought about smiling at that. Uh... <laughs> that deserves. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. And he says, oh, I think. I have a question. Is this a common initiation for new members to the Greyhound? Because she's talked into Sil's head twice now and could have done that for you. And here we are doing this on foot. He says, I daren't speak for the motivations of the Black Staff, as she would never dare to speak for mine or to disturb me without my permission. Before we leave, if you would permit me, is there anything else do you think we should know at this moment? He says, I have given you more than you know, child. Pass the word to Mistress Safar. Very well. I believe we don't want to overstay our welcome. <laughs> God, I wish I could have a nap. All right. Uh, he looks to you and he sort of sighs and he says, come, child. I walk over. And he places his hand on you and mutters a prayer. And you feel yourself sort of warm. Uh, and you have uh, protection from cold for the trip down. Ooh. Thank you for that. <laughs> He says, uh, I would like to ensure that my message reaches the Black Staff, and, well, I wasn't convinced you'd make it back. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, Rocky would be bound to survive if he had to leave the two of us on the mountain. <laughs> well, I'm not going to suck a up. gift horse in the mouth. Yep. No, oh, no. No, I'm good with All this. Right. All right, then let us away. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Juan. Juan. All right. So you all head back. Getting down the mountain is significantly easier than getting up the mountain was. Uh, so that's uh, that's that.
You've completed a task set by Vajra the Black Staff. Congratulations. Yay. I only got quadruple disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> my plane um, plague is coming right. into my character. What's that? My plane plague has gone into my character. Yeah. <laughs> we got our asses kicked without rolling initiative. Yep. Well I didn't done. even do anything. All I did was walk up a damn mountain. I love it. Um, all right, so a couple of things. We're gonna, um, I assume that you will pass word to Vajra. She doesn't immediately explain the message. Uh, she sort of tells you that she has some thinking to do on it and some study to do. Uh, Can I gain she, any insight from her? You, I mean, sh sure, yeah. Go ahead and roll a, a, a wisdom insight, please. With disadvantage, I assume. With disadvantage, yes. Fourteen. All right. Um, she seems to be pretty on the up and up. She does. She seems maybe more concerned okay. by the message than she initially led on, but she does also seem like genuinely unsure. Okay. I'm just um, she does tell you that if if there's anything that you all should know once she's had some time to think on the message, she'll she will let you know. Uh, she thanks you very much. Um, and uh, yeah. And I, what time is it? Oh, you know, by this time, it's it's the end of the day. In fact, you probably, it, with the condition that you all were in, probably went to her the next day after getting a bit of rest. And um, Wait, does that mean I'm no longer at eight hit points? Uh, <laughs> correct. You're at seventeen. Thanks for that. And as much fun as it was to see all of your faces, like we're going to montage the next six days of reconstruction of the tavern any days. So you all are going to be fine. <laughs> It was just really delightful to watch all of your horrified faces. So I still, um, still have three uh, uh, points of exhaustion. Uh, yeah, but we're going to montage six days, which means you'll be fine. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I thought um, I was okay, be so a few so things cool. as you all settle into life and business here on Troll Skull Alley. One of the things that I wanted to let you all know uh, for your future reference, and because we like to create a bit of a world here, uh, is that you all are not the only business on uh, in Troll Skull Alley in this area of the North Ward, perhaps the noisiest, but definitely not the only one. And over the course of your renovations and restorations, you meet a couple of individuals that we can have some interactions with, or maybe they're just people that you want to go to down the road in case you need anything. One of them, uh, Ani, you sort of have a bit of a run-in with. Um, there is a shop called the Steam and Steel, uh, which is a uh, weapons and armor forge just down the road from Troll Skull. And uh, it is run by two uh, Ganassi. Ganassi? I never remember which is the correct version. Whatever. I'm going to say Ganassi. Um, <laughs> by two Ganassi, uh, a fire and... I don't want to get this wrong because they're so cool. A fire and, and a water. Uh, Ganassi. And the fire one's name is Embrick, and he sort of comes over uh, knocking on Troll Skull Manor one day and demanding to speak to the smith in residence. And uh, basically, he's not super thrilled because he's heard uh, basically all he knows is that he's heard whispers that uh, the guild has been installing forging uh, equipment into this building. So he just wanted to know what was going on. And uh, he is very clearly rather hot tempered, which is not surprising for a fire Ganassi. Um, but uh, the water Ganassi that also works at the steam and steel sort of comes up behind him uh, and like puts his arms sort of on his shoulders and uh, calms him and introduces himself as Avi and uh, says, you will, you will have to forgive my husband. He, uh, tends to jump to the worst possible conclusions. Uh, he says, we of course would like to know uh, what your business will be, but we also want to wel welcome you and your compatriots to the neighborhood. Oh, that's all. Uh, come on in, you can see. It. We're just teaching kids a trade is all, so maybe they'll come to work for you or something. I mean, gosh, <laughs> competition <laughs> on Joel's Paul Alley, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's not entirely a lie, so I'm not going to worry about deception, but yeah. like, <laughs> um, 
So yeah, they're actually perfectly happy to, once <laughs> Avi calms Embrick down, uh, both of them are actually perfectly happy to have a training program for Smiths in the area. Uh, they invite all of you over to their shop at any point. They particularly are interested in maybe, you know, discussing trade secrets at some point with you, Ani. Um, they're willing to, you know, they don't, they, uh, they don't want to step on any toes, but they offer to, uh, you know, they, they remind, they let you know that they're happy to supply you all with things uh, if you have need. Not that you can't create it yourself, Annie, but it looks like you all are busy here. Um, I think Annie would also say, like, you need to come by sometime and try the potato juice. Avi <laughs> uh, says, I don't know that he's really, uh, that it's best if he doesn't drink, but... Um, Perhaps I'll stop by sometime. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe Imbrick would rather like a round or two. We got to actually. We also do a fighting area in in the in the. Did if you saw there on the second floor, you know. And sometimes me and Rocky have a go, and I'm always up for new challenges. So you know. <laughs> maybe uh, he does. He does look fairly eager about that. So yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, so that's the steam and steel. Uh, there's a, a an armory and a weapon shop down the road. Um, another place that you all find is uh, Corellan's Crown. Uh, this is a, um, a, oh, I should also mention that both of them are members of the um, most careful order of skilled smiths and metal forgers. And as you all have interacted, you also find out that Avi is a member of the, and, and I'm only telling you this again because I love these names so much, the Splendid Order of Armorers, Locksmiths, and Finesmiths. He's more the, Avi is more the um, armor of the couple, and Embrick, he is more the, the weaponsmith. Um... Then there's Corellin's Crown, which is an herbalism apothecary potion shop uh, that is run by uh, a, an elf named Fala. And Fala actually uh, introduced themselves to Theron because they heard that there was another uh, elf in the area that had uh, Corellin's blessing. And uh, so they introduced themselves first to you, Theron, uh, and invited you into their shop uh, and sort of got to know you first. Mm -hmm. They are actually a wood elf, uh, but also uh, prefer to be referred to as they or addressed as they. Uh, and so when you went into the shop sort of to get to know them a little bit, uh, you saw this lovely apothecary shop. What, what primarily caught your eyes were all of the... Um, all of the various potions. And as you maybe got to chatting with Fala a little bit about their their wares, you realize that they're quite the skilled herbalist. Mm -hmm. And that would be very helpful. Uh, so they've they've got all kinds of potions uh, that you may be able to find there. Uh, Non-magical, but herbal remedies. Uh, but then there are also some magical ones like potions of healing that are available, animal friendship, climbing, water breathing, things like that. Well, I'm sure with the tavern, we're going to need plenty of remedies for a hangover. I think Syl will be your <laughs> best customer. And they say, uh, they say, oh, I'll be sure to double my production on uh, on that particular herbal remedy then. Excellent. Thank you very much. I love it. Um, the third place that at least up to this point, you all have uh, have sort of met the proprietor of and gotten to know a little bit about is a place called the Bookworm's Treasure. Worm, of course, spelled W-Y-R-M. Of course. Uh, and uh, the proprietor of this shop actually comes by one day uh, to speak with Rowan <laughs> because they... Uh, who is this proprietor? <clears throat> ah, yes. Um, so a uh, short gold dragonborn named <laughs> Rishal uh, comes by to chat with Rowan one day, uh, mostly because he had heard uh, that you, through the grapevine, might be an arcanist of some description, and he wasn't sure if you were a member of the most of the Watchful Order or not. Uh, but he just wanted to check in since he heard that there was a new arcanist in town or in on the street, on the block, in the hood, uh, whatever. Oh, well, of course. And I am a bard, uh, a fine, upstanding bard. Uh, all of my paperwork has been officially logged. And uh, I'm happy to show you 
uh, the, the copies and the license if that's necessary. He says, oh, no, 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 no need, no need. I just, uh, you know, we've had a few people uh, settle down around here and, and you know, I uh, honestly, between you and me, I could take or leave the watchful order, but it's just easier if we all sort of play along and you, you know how it is. Can I insight check? Yeah, absolutely. I get a 12. Uh, he seems fairly on the up and up and about that. Like he's, you know, just another another arcanist trying to make their ends meet, whatever. All right. Um, he uh, does invite you, you over. Know, Go ahead. Oh, you know, I feel largely the same. And uh, I'm happy to hear you say that. Uh, I, I think that we're good to get along famously uh you know you know uh we're, we're trying to even put a school in over here and uh we're obviously going to need all sorts of books so that the children can uh receive a good well-rounded education he says absolutely uh stop by any time browse the wares let me know if i can special order anything for you and yeah. uh yeah so you do at some point, I'm sure, go over and and it's it's he's got an enormous stock. He is happy to order sort of anything that you need. Um, he does also have some access to a small collection, a special collection. Uh, but as you get to know him, he he shows you the special collection of spell books, um, and he does make a fair bit of his coin. Uh, you know, allowing wizards to come in and copy spells out of the list. Obviously, that doesn't apply to any of you. But he does also offer. You know, he doesn't know what y'all's business is, but mm -hmm. he says, you know, uh, if, if you ever need, um, I also am quite a skilled uh, scroll scribe. And so if you have need of, of uh, some, some spell scrolls, I'm sure I, we could arrange uh, for that to be done as well. Well, that, that is very sincerely appreciated. And, you know, it, if we ever get around to including uh, arcane magic in the curriculum, I would love to have you as a guest speaker sometime. That would be at all acceptable. Oh, he just lights up at that. He loves this idea. He's all about it. Excellent. All right. All right, so for, for at the moment, at least, it's been almost a full 10 day at this point uh, since you all sort of moved in here. So that's that's sort of an idea of, of the neighborhood, who's around, what services are available, uh, and all of that. Uh, can we just take a moment and give thanks to all of these amazing writers yeah, on right. the coast for including all of these incredible LGBTQ characters in their book? Hello, I love it. Thanks, y'all. That's my moment. All right. Um, <laughs> cool. So the renovations get done. Uh, yeah. A little ahead of schedule, in fact. It only uh, it only really takes a 10-day rather than the 12 days that were quoted to you all, largely because stuff just keeps getting done overnight on its own. I love and this the, ghost. The closer that the renovations get to being finished, the more you all begin to also hear things. Mm. Uh, sometimes you'll walk into the tap room of the tavern and it'll sound for all the world like it's full of patrons, just for a moment, just for a second or two, and then it's gone. Uh, it almost sort of seems to like fuzz and fade and then it's gone after you know, a second or three. Um, occasionally, as you're moving through the various rooms, you feel something or someone bump you, but there's never anyone there. Um, those sorts of slightly more tangible and immediate haunting type things begin to happen that you all notice. And and the, the workers sort of start to notice it too. The various uh, uh, artisans and laborers that are there also begin to notice it and and that also maybe contributed to getting done in 10 days. Like they kind of want a GTFO. So. Uh, are they, are they uh, in my room? Cause Theron and I are living here. Um, that is a good question. I don't think anyone's up in the attic at this point. I don't think you've noticed anything up there. Um, Theron, you definitely, very small things at this point, but th things have been moved. Like you wake up and things aren't exactly where you thought you left them the night before, and but it's but most of the stuff is pretty minor in in your bedroom, Theron. You I don't hear so. sounds or, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, um, I would like to, if at all possible, document all of the uh, strange uh, happenings as they occur, 
and then Absolutely. make sure to uh, provide a, a complete list uh, to Volo uh, to assist with the, the writing of his book. So you do, and he is so excited and tells you that he will be your first and best customer once the tavern is open. Excellent. Thank uh, you. And he promises to bring Rainier and Floon along and to spread the word. And uh, in fact, I think that's worth uh, some, some good uh, marketing gold for your opening week. Um, and so the tavern opens. Uh, do we have a name for it? Oh, well, fighting I, spirits. I, I do love fighting spirits. Yeah, yeah. the whole I'm, building. I'm like all of the reasons. <laughs> fighting spirits, I'm 100% on board. Okay, great. So fighting spirits oh, yeah. opens. Uh, and it is, well, let's see actually how good an opening week it is, opening 10 day it is. So now that you are up and running, um, you all can roll on a chart in the Dungeon Master's Guide about, uh, that is designed to uh, deal with downtime activities running a business. And I just, this is the sort of thing that like is so tedious, but also I think is so fun. So sorry if you don't. Mm. Do I need to um, get a dodecahedron? Uh, so we're gonna need actually a D100. I have one upstairs. Um, and for right now, I mean, I assume the rest of you have one. So every 10 day, we're gonna roll this. So we'll sort of spread this out for the rest of the series to see how the tavern is doing. So for right now, now, Alex, I think we'll just have another couple of people roll it. And hey, then... if somebody else has one, it saves me a trip yeah. upstairs. I so don't want to go upstairs. So let me have, in fact, let's let's spread the love. Uh, let's have Rowan and Theron. Why don't you each roll a d10? Okay. Uh, Theron, you'll be the tens digit. Rowan, you'll be the ones digit. Um, <laughs> Normally, you would just add 10 to this because you all are working with the guilds and getting quality staff and uh, supplies. Um, but since you got Volo on board and he added a bit more marketing for your first week and because it's opening week, we're actually gonna add 15 to this roll this time. So Theron, what was our 10's digit? Nine. Nine, holy gods. All right, Rowan, what was, our, what was yours? Seven. <laughs> okay, you make a lot of money for your Ooh. opening week. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the business covers all of its own maintenance costs for this whole 10 day. So you don't have to pay the uh, normal uh, regular recurring costs, which I think we decided for you guys was going to be 15 gold uh, a 10 day. Um, normally it would be 25, but you guys are using criminal contacts and using your connections and stuff like that. So down to that. So those 15 gold are totally covered and I need the remaining, oh, this works out well. I need uh, Rocky, Ani, and Sil to all also roll d10s to find out how much of a profit you make this week. All right, Rocky. I've got a six. All right, Sil. Five. Five, that's 11, and Ani? Six. Six, so that's 17, doing a quick bit of math. Uh, all right, so on top of those 15 gold that uh, the tavern sort of pays for for itself, <laughs> you all make 85 gold this week Ooh. on the tavern. That is a small fortune. Do we get to put the 85 gold into our oh. currency? So yeah, you all can sort of decide how you want to keep track of the amount, the money that the that the tavern makes. Um, Do we make eighty five a piece or eighty five total? No, 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 eighty five total. <laughs> okay, I can take all care right. of that. I could be um, treasurer. You want to be treasurer? <laughs> I'll be treasurer. I love it. Go for it. All right. I'm going to keep it in the currency uh, section under Electrum because who uses Electrum? <laughs> there you go. That's a good plan. And we'll keep it on. We'll keep it on like whole golds, whole whole dragons for this. Um, I love this. It is a popular spot especially for this opening week. Um, you've got lots of regulars uh, that really just find the place really delightful, but also your school begins, the word of the school begins to spread, right? Um, and you begin to have the first sort of students uh, begin to trickle in. Uh, that takes a little longer because it's the less, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's sort of the less public facing part of the, of the building. So word sort of has to spread a little more slowly. Uh, so we'll begin to address that in the next 10 day. But in the meantime, Theron, uh, the night after opening, everyone has had a great time. Uh, it's, it's the start of what you can tell is just going to be a really solid week of business. And uh, as you are turning in for the night, the place is finally closed down. The last of the 
revelers have departed uh, and everyone has sort of left and you head upstairs to your bedroom, Theron, uh, and you hear a soft tapping on your window. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a higher up floor, right? Yes. Oh. Who's that <laughs> rapping at my chamber door? My window? <laughs> really good. I, I go over to it and I'll, uh, I'll just, yeah, with my, with my low light, with my elf eyes, what do I uh-huh. see? Uh, so you see just outside, um, you see sort of hovering right outside the window is a small winged snake that looks like it has something tied around its body. Hmm. I'll cautiously open up the window and step back. Okay. Uh, the snake sort of flies in and uh, flies over to your shoulder and sort of slithers around your shoulders. Uh and you can see now that a parchment has been tied around its body. Hmm, okay. I'll unwrap it and pat the feather boa on the, on the head. <laughs> uh, it, uh, as soon as it's unwrapped, the snake takes flight again and starts to tap on the window again. It's cold, I had to close it. Out it flies, yeah, and out it flies. On the parchment, as you unroll it, uh, is a very brief unsigned message that simply says, want to be part of something big? Speak to Davil Star Song at the Yawning Portal. Davil Star Song. Is this a name I'm familiar with? Um, I don't know that it is, but go ahead and make an intelligence water deep. Uh, water deep, whatever I called it, knowledge, check. 17. You have heard this name. Um, after you guys, after you folks realized uh, how actually intense the feud between the uh, Xanathar's Guild and the Zentarum was, uh, after having some run-ins yourselves, uh, you you sort of kept your ear to the ground uh, for information about that. Just, you know, if for nothing else, just to make sure that it wasn't going to like spill over and disrupt your new business. Um, and you have heard of Davil Star Song. He seems to be a member of the uh, Zentarum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just, we're all turning in for the night. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go check and see if there's a sock on uh, on Sil's doorknob. Ha! Sil, is there a sock on your doorknob? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cautious. I I'm gonna. God. Tap tap tap. Sil, I I know there's no sock on your doorknob, but I don't want to make a mistake and think you might have just been drunk and forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I answer the door. Almost naked, but no, there's nobody in here. It's just me. What, what do you want? I, I, um, I, this is going to sound a bit more odd and concern, considering where we live and the things that go on around here. So a uh, feathery snake with wings just delivered a message to me. Uh, something from, it's a member of the Zentarum uh, inviting me, I don't know, me or us to something big at the awning portal. I think they might be trying to recruit us. Hmm. Well, we have to tread lightly. We do belong to an order now that if we bring harm to the city, might bring harm to us. Mm Hmm. Well, in the morning, I'm going to send a message with uh, Roadkill. I I don't I don't trust the the these particular guilds, and if we're going to be members of the Grey Hand, we should at least keep. Keep Vajra informed. Can I see the letter? I'm going to hand it off. Sure. I'll read it. Do I know of this person? Uh, you can also make an intelligence water deep knowledge check. If you, do, if you don't mind. I do not. <laughs> uh, 15. You've also heard the name, yeah. Okay. But I've had no dealings with them. No, no. All right. Well... Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to talk to uh, Rowan either. Hmm. But for now, I think we just need some sleep. Indeed. 
We'll talk in the morning. And I'll go back to my room. Okay. And I'll just close the door. All right. And I'll so- tell the person under the bed to get out. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I knew it. Roll perception. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> I regret nothing. I, I go to bed. <laughs> Whoops. What? I just skipped, but I think I'm back now. Am I good with you all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love everything about what just happened. Uh oh. No, we still see you. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Excellent. So, uh, well, let's uh, let's hop to the morning then. Uh, what are you all going to do about this little invitation? Is it a warm morning or a cold morning? That's a good question. I'm going to roll some dice because I haven't done that tonight and find out. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's actually it's a it's a much warmer morning than it has been. That's uh, the clouds have sort of cleared out. The snow is has stopped. Uh, and the sun is shining, which really just makes it feel so much warmer out, even when it's not. Okay. So with uh, with the little with a little baby blue uh, winter coat that I had commissioned for roadkill, I'm going to send a little message along <laughs> to head to the uh, to go tell Vajra about that the Zentarum has contacted us with an invitation. Okay. Okay. Wait. What is Roadkill's response to this little coat? Yeah. Uh, what color is it? It's sky blue. Oh, thank God. Th- and I tie the little pink ribbon just, just to be so. <laughs> really? 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 Oh. You look so cute in it, Rod- Rody. Come on. Yeah, but really, we're, we're tying this on my tail. My tail's the only part of me that's not furred, and that's not what you make the cloak for? Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Now it's fine. Off I go into the freezing cold. Hope I don't get frostbite in my tail. Bye. <laughs> oh my god, he's such a sassy little thing. I love it. Oh. Uh, so he runs off. Um, Theron, make me a hmm. Make me a wisdom insight check, please. Insight. This is not about roadkill. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, 15. 15, okay, great. You, as um, Roadkill is taking off, you suddenly have a, 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 you know how like something will trigger you in the day to like remember a dream that you had? Mm -hmm. Um, You remember a dream all of a sudden from last night uh, that was, visually all you remember is a lot of darkness and something sort of seeming to push you forward. And you remember sort of stumbling forward in the dark and moving and uh, you got to a sort of wall that had uh, the insignia of the Zentarum, which you all have seen before because you saw it on Candle Lane. And you realize that this insignia is in fact a, a winged flying snake. And just as you touched it, uh, the insignia transformed into a live flying snake that circled you a few times uh, and then flew off into the darkness. And that's all you remember from the dream. Uh, this was vivid. Hmm. I'll, I'll keep that one to myself. All right. Um, so... Roadkill gets to Vajra and you uh, much more quickly this time uh, get a message. Theron, actually, you get it this time. Uh, and <laughs> you get it this time. And uh, she says uh, simply that your oaths hold, but it might be useful to keep an eye on the Zentarum. From what I can tell, they are fractured at the moment and might in some way be connected to your message from Chlam. (laughs) Sorry, it's never gonna be that, be funny to me. (laughs) Yeah, but now I'm doing it exaggerated on purpose. (laughs) I'll report back whatever we find. Are they telling us that? I'll I'll tell Syl, she's the only one that really knows. Okay, I love the sisterhood that we're getting. So, Syl, 
We are, right. we're to go. I believe uh, we're given permission to go. She knows we'll be there, so it's not going to look suspicious in any way. And uh, if we find anything, I'm going to report to her. If uh, you think that's a bad idea, just let me know. But it's, it can't hurt to get information, right? Well, it depends on the information. <laughs> this uh, asking for permission thing, it's going to take some getting used to. Well, then leave that to me, and you handle this sneaky, stabby, sexy stuff. Ah, we're going to have a talk about that later. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. Rocky? I was going to say, are you telling the rest of the, the fam? Are they or all showing up? Gonna be a sister crew? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we're, you know, into the day now. Yeah. I, I got to bring the boost shipments, and you know, especially if we're running through stock, like, I'm, I'm sure we are. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rowan, uh, are you yes. familiar with a member of this, any, anyone in the Zentarum by name? Uh, well, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, probably. Uh, <laughs> probably. Anyone? Uh, uh, Mr. Starsong? David? I believe. Uh, it's not ringing a bell. <laughs> Go on, though. Uh, well, we've been invited by the Zentarum for a meetup at the Yawning Portal. Oh, well, that sounds yeah. interesting. Um, but, so, do, do you feel weird about going? Would you like somebody you, that isn't all, <laughs> uh, you know, involved with your 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 club to, to, you know, go and maybe keep an eye on things? Well, well we did. Well, given permission. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really permission, but she she did say it was a good idea. So it was more okay. we let her know that we were go. I let her know that we, the invitation came, and she didn't advise me against it. It's not really permission. It's just simply advice from a friend. Well, well, I think that we should we should head over then. Uh, let's let's get everybody together, and you know we haven't been to the yawning portal since that. You know the the fight, and uh, you know. Maybe we can we can we can take some of the regulars that were always showing up to see uh, Annie and Rocky duke it out and inform them that hey you know those those people that you love to watch they're actually running a little bit of an academy right now and you know Dern, kind of spread the word. Denon wouldn't like that. I really don't want oh, to get on his know. bad side. Well, it's I, nice I, to have I friends who can live as long as I can. I wasn't <laughs> expecting to like shout it from the rooftops, but I have already talked to you know one one of his employees about getting employees, so I kind of figure that you know it's it should be fine. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, so I think this is probably like midday, if not late <laughs> afternoon at this point. One of the first things that you all had to deal with this morning, I totally forgot about this. Uh, one of the first things that you all had to deal with this morning, um, I don't know if you remember, but when you all were uh, at the Skewered Dragon, is you ran into a dwarf that you gave some gold to and told to come look y'all up if he ever needed anything. Yay! He showed up this morning, having heard about the wildly successful opening. Is he uh, and is looking ish and is looking for a job. I'll sit down with him. Okay. Did we ever know his learn his name? I that's what I'm trying to look. I don't think so. I, I think he was too written. drunk to remember his own name, I, if I'm being perfectly honest. Is his name like Mike or something? Mike well it is now. Let's call him punching a drunk face. <laughs> I'm like I'd like to come up behind him and just be like, you're going to do absolutely great. Uh, you know, it's all, I'll give him some like pointers on setting a good first impression for mm -hmm. getting, doing a job interview and yeah. give him bardic inspiration. I love <laughs> it so much. All right. So I'll sit down with him and be like, well, it's wonderful to see you again. Mm hmm. Uh, um, hmm. When. How drunk are we right now? Be honest. Only a little. Only a little and just enough that you like me better like this than you would like that. I'll do a good job, I promise. Well, you and I are going to have to make an agreement. You sell the ale. Huh? You do not drink the ale. And his eyes get huge and he goes, any of it? We will discuss an after shift drink. But I need you on your very best. And right now, can you even spell your name? Point taken. 
Right. So as long as you stay sober during your shift, we will stay friends and you will stay employed. I'll try my best. I believe in you, darling. Okay. Welcome to the fighting spirit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he's on the staff now too, in addition to Bonnie's four friends. <laughs> Yay! I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to have walked past him and just looked him dead in the eye, just deadpan and said, the ghost will be watching to make sure you do well. <laughs> and he sort of looks to you still and is like, really? No, no drinks at all. Okay. 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 <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we were dealing with uh, this invitation from Davil. Yes. Um, I think, uh, what do you think, Theron? You and me go in. Annie, Rocky, Rowan, kind of watch from afar. Yeah. Max. Yeah, I mean, they know we're no friends to to the Xanathar's guild after what we've put them through. So we, we are going in on good terms. True, but um, I like to uh, make sure our back is covered. Hmm. Yeah, keep, well, we always have Annie. She She watches our backs really well. And I've got Rocky and Arnie and Rowan. Small okay. as he might be, Ro he's mighty. Rowan's our mm -hmm. secret weapon. He is. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Muscle his head a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I love this. So, to the yawning portal then? To the yawning portal. Okay. To the yawning portal! And I dance through the streets. <laughs> yes, I love it. All right, so you guys get to the Yawning Portal. This is a familiar tavern. You all know what it looks like. You've been so busy with the fighting spirit that you haven't really had a ton of time to do your 10-day um, uh, fights lately. And a lot of people are excited to see you back, uh, asking you if you're there to fight and are you know disappointed when when it's not an immediate yes, but, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> you ask around uh, for Davil, I presume, and uh, get directed towards uh, the back of the second floor and run into none other than uh, that half-orc that was uh, attacked all those days ago in the tavern. And she sort of cracks a great big smile and says, I thought it might be you five. Oh, oh hey there, pretty. Hi. Uh, she says, uh, so you got his message, huh? Well, you know. It's, it's obviously the most interesting way to ever receive a letter. Now, are you all there or are some of you holding back? I would imagine that it was Theron and I at the front and okay. Mo and Rocky and Annie keeping our watch at our back. Yeah, but like, think... but like right behind you. Or, or further back in the tavern. Way. Okay. Yeah, I think I think Rocky and Annie maybe uh, we might be entertaining some some loyal fans. Great, I love that. <laughs> maybe with our like story and rescue of of Flynn, be like, and this yeah. there was this pretty boy, yeah. and like, there was this half orc, and I just cut his neck off clean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so she's uh, she sort of sees that going on, and she's like, "Well, I hate to interrupt, but uh, if you all want to speak with uh, with Dabble, he's expecting you." Lead the way. All right, and she sort of leads you over to a table, uh, and uh, there, sitting at at the table, is uh, Davil Starsong, uh, dressed in dark uh, leathers. He is a uh, an elf, and uh, let's see if there's a good. Uh, looks like a sun elf. He's got uh, fair, sort of golden skin, uh, and uh, long, looks like reddish hair, and he sits you all down, uh, greets you. And uh, says, um, you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't entirely sure whether or not the uh, the five of you would actually come. I've heard uh, quite a bit of stories about what you all have been up to in the last couple of ten days, saving nobles and then opening up a pub. And uh, well, you've been busy. I think I'm glad you're here. Well, never has to listen, so we're here to listen. Uh, he has drinks waiting for all of you on the table and sort of gestures to them and offers them up to you. Uh, and he says, look, I, uh, I don't want to beat around the bush. He says, uh, first of all, I can only assume that you all have heard some rather nasty rumors about the Zentarum at this point. Am I right? Perhaps. Sure. And he says, oh, now, now, now. There's no need to be polite. I know what's going about about us. And I'm here to tell you that, well, some of it is true, but there's been a bit of a problem, you see. He says, now, 
a bit about myself to sort of set the scene. Uh, so I used to be much like something tells me you all are on the verge of being. I used to be uh, quite the successful adventurer, uh, but uh, my party and I, we decided to hang up our hats quite a while ago, live a sort of more sedentary life. And uh, so we decided to join the Zentarum. Now, they've not got the best reputation, but we joined because we help people in need. We provide loans, we provide protection services, we provide guards for caravans, we provide mercenaries, we all sorts of services. At a high and price, I'm sure. He says, we cover our costs. He says, um, now, what you have to understand is that, what you have to get is that the Black Network has had quite a sordid past. There's no denying that. But the modern day Zentarum is really looking to get a bit more on the up and up. At least most of us are. But it seems that we've got a bit of a problem there. Not too long ago, right before all this fighting and rumors started, another gang, a bunch that I don't know, I have nothing to do with, infiltrated the city and tried to take over the Xanathar's guild. We were perfectly happy living right alongside them. We were not interested in anything that Xanathar had to touch. We were on the up and up. We were above the streets. This other gang comes in, tries to take over, fails, but of course leaves our mark, the mark of the Zentarum, all over the damn place. And now they've set off a war between the two organizations. I, as far as I'm concerned, my friends and I are here to end the violence and restore the peace. And I think you all would be valued members of our organization and could be quite useful in helping to achieve them goals. I believe them. Insight is fine. Wisdom insight. Eighteen. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more to every story, but he's not lying. He's just probably not giving you everything. Okay. So I, he's not lying to me about how it's not. No, no. All that stuff about how like he was, has no interest in the Xanathar's guild and like how that's a different sect. All of that is for sure true. Okay. So how do we come into play with this? You say we can help. How? He says, um, well, eh, Honestly, we just need, you know, some good strong hands to uh, keep their eyes out, uh, protect our interests, uh, and see what information they can gather about this other sect, this other group that's infiltrated. You know, the, the Zentarum is a, uh, a Toril-wide network, but all of our cells are not necessarily the most connected. And, uh, well, let's say that Yagra, she put in a good word for the five of you after that little scuffle a while back. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about, right? Like, she did nothing wrong. She did nothing against the, the Xanathar's guild, but they see Zentarum and don't take a moment to ask any questions and come in swinging for my friends who had nothing to do with the war. Uh, if, if I may, I'll, I'll kind of look of over to me. Uh, have you ever heard of the Toss Cobble Porridge Pot family? Uh, he sort of thinks for a moment. He's There's a hype in between Toss Cobble and Porridge Pot. <laughs> <laughs> he says, matter of fact, I think I have. Well, with that in mind, uh, perhaps we should be talking more about a potential alliance than necessarily individuals joining with your organization. Since, you know, sometimes there can be divided loyalties. He thinks about that for a minute and he says, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's all right. He says, uh, now I, I couldn't guarantee all the, the protections and benefits that a member of our organization will have, but that's I'm sure we could come to some sort of arrangement, yeah. Uh, I could say the same thing right back to you. Uh, <laughs> he smiles, yeah. Well, I obviously, uh, am not empowered to make uh, an arrangement on this level, but I'll make sure to, uh, that the, the correct individuals uh, hear about this conversation. If, again, if that's acceptable to everybody else. I'll nod. We are right. 
a group who wants to keep peace and we want to keep bloodshed off the streets. It's it sounds like our motivations align and uh, looking at Rocky and we want to especially protect the people who would be vulnerable and in the lower parts like the dark wards and we don't want anyone getting hurt by people who are just looking to harm. So if we can help in any way that protects Waterdeep as a whole, without being members, it's still in everyone's best interest. He says, yeah, that sounds that sounds right sensible to me. Uh, he says, um, well, I hope you don't mind me asking, but it seems that uh, since you won't be joining the organization, which which is fine, I think we can, like the, like the hen here said, I think we can still help each other. Uh, he says, uh, as a bit of a show of good faith, uh, where there is a bit of something that I could use your help on right away, just as a sort of, uh, as a sort of, uh, you know, trust exercise, we'd compensate you, of course, uh, but just to sort of get an idea of what the sort of things we're going to be needing are, and so that we can get a better read on your skill sets. Go on. He says, well, uh, I think this will be right up your alley, considering what the uh, the elf over there just said. Uh, someone, you see, is killing elf and half-elf sailors in the dock wards. We found three dead so far, each one decapitated by a blade in the middle of the dead of night. I don't have the resources right now to look into it, but I'm hoping that you all might, and... Me thinks the City Watch, uh, well, they haven't done anything about it yet, so maybe they could use a bit of your ale. That sounds great. I can be bait. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sam says that I'll leave the details up to you all, but if you'd be willing to look into it, uh, we'd much appreciate it, and uh, I think it would get this, uh, this business relationship off to a good start. Uh, well, I think that sounds very reasonable. Well, fantastic. He says, uh, you find me here most nights, and if I'm not here, Yagra will be, and you can send word through her. Uh, let us know when you find anything out. Do you have any, any lead at all? He says, uh, no, not really. Um, we found all the bodies in different spots, all within the dark wall, the dock ward, all pretty close to the water's edge. But uh, there are any number of taverns in that area that they could have come out of, ships they could have come off of, so it's hard to say. Is it a clean decapitation or jagged? Uh, surprisingly clean for the most part, yeah. Was the wound cauterized at all? No. All right. Uh, were these individuals members of your organization or at least associated with it uh, tangentially through your operations? He says, uh, yeah, you might say they were similar. They had arrangements uh, similar to what you're proposing. Mm -hmm. So, well, what part of the Dark Ward would we have to... Would, would you, are, these, are they the same or are they spread? Uh, he said, well, they've been spread out, but most of them have been uh, sort of near or around Ship Street. So you might start there. Hmm. And... Sounds right. like fun. Yeah, I, I think that that gives us at least enough to, to get started with this. And if you think of anything else that might be beneficial to us while we're poking our nose into the matter, uh, it'd be very much appreciated since it sounds as though we might very well be targets of decapitation. <laughs> you are not wrong. Uh, yes, uh, we'll keep in touch. And once you find anything, like I said, you can find me or Yagra here. Mm -hmm. And you can find us at the Fighting Spirit. He says, yeah, I'd heard about that. I might have to check it out sometime. You should. Oh, potato <laughs> juice. It, it is delicious. Uh, it's it's a little bit magical, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> that was it actually, right. Is it binge. actually potato juice? I've been thinking you were talking about vodka this whole time. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of vodka-ish. Uh, again, a lot of that stuff is very constrained by the rules and regulations of the individuals who set <laughs> those sorts of things. Uh, let's just call it vodka. That's, uh, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Great. Well, swing by, no, darling. it's called potato juice. Right? Yeah, well, you know, it, <laughs> it's made out of perfectly normal, natural stuff that goes through an unnatural alchemical process. I don't know a lot of details. <laughs> I love it. 
All right. Well, as you all head off, he encourages you to uh, begin checking out these murders in the dock ward as soon as possible tonight, if you're available. And uh, as you all head out of the yawning portal, we are going to say goodnight for this week's episode. I know, I know. Uh, awesome. This like role play heavy, but still really delightful yeah. episode. I, I sort though. of knew that this chapter was going to be uh, like that. And I loved it. Um, you all are such a delight to watch and listen to role play. Uh, in fact, I since we didn't do any combat tonight and there was no sort of like material gains for you all in that respect, why don't you all take uh, inspiration for being Yay. wonderful Yay. and game role players? Uh, <laughs> it was a delight and I thank you. And I of course thank all of you who have hung out with us tonight in the chat and on the channel for watching. Uh, we appreciate you very much watching. We're gonna go around real quick, tell all of you who we are, where you can find us on the internet and what our favorite moment of tonight was. Uh, this week, let's start with Allison. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Atletica05, also with uh, Red Hand Roleplay on Podbean in our podcast for West Marches a Thule style of game. Um, getting pretty intense for uh, our season, season one. Um, so take a listen to that. Uh, favorite moment of tonight. Uh, I'm probably some other people are probably going to use this one, but I'm going to say it's roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> so that just coming out, that personality, that was pretty hilarious. So I like that. Nice, uh, Alex. How about you? Uh, I'm Alexander Gaston. You can find me on Twitter at Guard Song. Um, I'm going to change it eventually. I just have to <laughs> um, or you can follow me on Instagram, which I'm usually more active on at Wolf and Dagger. Way cooler name. <laughs> um, I probably favorite night of tonight, probably favorite every week is always my interaction with Steven or Rowan. Yeah. Um, I think tonight was, I think it was super special. I really, really enjoyed it. And I thank Steven for that. Cause he's got this great character. Um, <laughs> and of course being able to have a mouse in my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then fantastic. Steven, how about you? Uh, my name is Steven Rowe and uh, I can be found on Twitter at right row. Uh, I'd say that my favorite part of tonight, and you know, I'm a designer, so I really love kind of trying to see behind the curtain, even though I haven't. Uh, they're trying to like second guess some of the design elements that are going into this, especially it, like the the writers are amazing, and they did a wonderful job. And I love all the world building and the the way that we're getting control over holding and getting to make it our own and how many different directions that could possibly go in. And, and that for me is a lot of fun. Me too, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, Jonathan. Hey, uh, I'm Jonathan and you can find me at Red Hand Roleplay on Twitter. Um, I DM, I run the Red Hand Roleplay podcast um, with Allison and a couple other guys who are on the stream, the other people who are on the stream. Um, yeah, I think my favorite part of tonight, uh, yeah, it's always, it's it's when we were deciding whether or not to join the uh, the, the gray hand. Um, it's you getting to see those little parts from each person's perspective and figure out who our characters are a little more. It's, it's wonderful. I love it. It's great. Definitely. We have a great group. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right, last but not least, Max. Hi, uh, Max, the ever-increasingly odd McLaren. <laughs> and... Uh, I can be found on Twitter at AllMaxD20, and uh, I also just want to plug, I've got a, I'm DMing a one-shot this coming Sunday, kind of a little horror-themed nice. game with some yeah. of the Thread Raiders and other friends from Twitter. Uh, that one's going to be at uh, 3 p 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And my favorite part of this, still getting exhausted by four points. That was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, bullshit. Was it was. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, and I am your dungeon master for this group, Eugenio Vargas. You can find me on Twitter at Eugenio underscore Vargas, which is spelled down there. Um, I am the dungeon master for the actual play podcast, The Last Refuge. There's a logo right there. Um, you can find us on Twitter at DND Last Refuge. That's D, the letter N, D, Last Refuge. We are about to, so let's see, today we released uh, 
this week's episode early to our patrons who have joined us on Patreon. Uh, this week's episode comes out on Wednesday, and then next week we are going to have a Halloween special episode uh, that we are recording this Sunday that I'm super excited about. Um, I try and do one holiday special a year of some sort, so this year it's it's Halloween. Uh, so come check us out dndlastrefuge.com uh, and thank you so much for joining us here come back on Thursday night uh, when the next crew the autumn crew is going to get their shot at uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist that's led by Dan Gaston our fantastic host here on Variant Roles thank you so very much then come back also on Friday night for Taryn Winnie's group and on uh, Saturday morning afternoon for DM Corey's group check out what they're all doing find where the connections are uh, watch us all we're we're getting real close to getting into the meat of this adventure now that we've been going for a little while and gotten sort of the base stuff out of the way and taken care of so things are going to really start to ratchet up so please spread the word please subscribe to the channel if that's a thing that you do um, or follow us on Twitter and here on Twitch chat with us over the course of the week we are constantly chatting about this campaign in the discord so feel free to tweet at us and join that conversation if you have uh, ideas and conspiracy theories about how the different streams are linked we want to hear all of those and um, that's it for tonight thank you so very much we hope to see you back in here on Thursday night for the autumn crew and definitely next Monday night same time same place as we continue on with the winter crew thanks everybody have a good night <laughs>